Hello and welcome to Alumni Field for another presentation of WCBN Sports' coverage of Michigan softball. I'm Alex Strange, joined by Charlie Brigham for game number two of today's doubleheader between Michigan and Northwestern. I want to thank you for joining us here on YouTube, and we understand that uh, our audio is again being used on the BTN Plus stream, so whichever way you are consuming today's coverage, we'd like to thank you and welcome you in here to Alumni Field. Michigan evened this weekend four-game set with a win in game one of the doubleheader, 7-2. to two. Northwestern won yesterday 4-1. to one. Game number three of the series and game number two here today. And it's the same pitching matchup uh, from yesterday. Megan Bobian for the Wolverines and Danielle Williams for the Wildcats. Northwestern looking to get right after a very frustrating uh, first game. Defensive lapses. And Michigan was very clean all the way around. We'll look to keep that momentum going here this afternoon for game number two. Yeah, the bats that Michigan lacked yesterday in that first game of this weekend series sure came to play in game number two. Lexi Blair especially, two for four, with an inside-the-park grand slam as well as an RBI double. She was all over the place making solid contact throughout the entirety of that game. Well, here we go. Uh, Similar batting order to the first game between these two teams for Northwestern. You've got a very similar top of the order. Skyler Schellmeyer, Rachel Lewis, and Jordan Warren Rudd, 1, 2, 3. Newport in the hole, Zedak, 5th, and Maeve Nelson, 6th. The bottom of the order is a little bit different, but 1 through 6 is the same. Schellmeyer will get ready to step in. She was 0 for 3 against Storaco in game number 1. The windup, first pitch on the way, shows bunt, pulls it back. Bobian delivers it. A little low. I thought Megan was pretty solid yesterday. Ran into a little bit of trouble with the command, but timely hitting for Northwestern. A little bit of good luck on those pop flies, and rough defense really did Bobian in on Friday night. Yeah, Bobian looks solid. It's like you said. Just 1 0 on the way. Called strike. Home plate umpire is Tyler Barfus, so it's going to be a little bit different, and we assume probably a little wider strike zone than we saw in the first game from Carlos Guzman. He's moved over to third, and Naomi Erdahl stands down there at first. Yeah, strike zone is real tight for both teams, but consistent last game. 1-1 one, one tap foul by the slapper Schellmeyer. Count quickly to 1-2. and two. Interesting score that both of these teams will uh, like. 3-1 to one now, Iowa over Minnesota. Headed to the bottom of the seventh. Last call for the Gophers there in game one of that doubleheader out in Minneapolis. See if the Hawkeyes can close it out. Both these teams, along with Minnesota, in the tight three-way race for the top of the conference. 1-2 on the way. That pitch high, 2-2. Two two. Rise ball from Bobian was something she struggled with on Friday. The changeup was there. We've seen that throughout her whole career. Great command over her changeup. It's been really her lights-out pitch, but struggled with that one. Count even at two apiece. That one just a little outside. Three and two. Michigan's got the infield playing in and the outfield very shallow against Schellmeyer. Obviously no real power. Only one extra base hit this season, and it was a triple. Bobian would like to get this first out and start the game on the right foot. Three, two, swing and a foul back. Schellmeyer 0 for 3 last game. Looking to get something going on the offensive end. Schellmeyer also a couple defensive mishaps. Yeah. One of which led to Lexi Blair's inside the park grand slam. 3-2, swing and a ground ball right back to the pitcher. Bobian makes the quick play over, and the first out is recorded. 1-3 put out. And certainly Schellmeyer, that game feels quite different if she can just stop the ball from getting by her in the outfield. Probably would have held it to 3-2 to two Michigan at that point, but alas, did not happen for the Cats. Here's Rachel Lewis. Yeah, that being said, that play for Schellmeyer wasn't an error on her part. It was just really positioning. She yeah, was she playing was playing so in. The entire outfield playing very shallow. First pitch is a ball, and I don't really know why they were playing so shallow. I mean, Lexi Blair... Has a bit of power in her bat. I mean, five homer or four home runs on the season. Yeah, it is five now that the Grand Slam. But at the time, it was four homers. And, you know, she's got doubles power. 
1-0 on the way. There's a called strike. And, you know, with two outs, you don't need to be in run prevention mode. Uh, it didn't really make sense why the infield and the outfield in particular was so drawn in. But regardless, that was a tough play for her. There have definitely been some people of the Northwestern fan base in this stadium here today, and including the team, so I have heard. There's a called strike one and two that are angry about the scoring decision on that play. I was told by several Northwestern fans downstairs that it should have been an E6. It was definitely a tough play for the shortstop, Maeve Nelson. Nelson didn't really fumble the ball at all. It she didn't really make contact. Yeah. 1-2, swing and a ground ball to short. Rodriguez there, throw across the diamond. Pick by Allen, not going to be made. And that's going to be an infield hit for Rachel Lewis. Throw hopped for Natalia. That's going to be probably an E6 unless they give it to Allen on the, on the pick. Rachel Lewis with so much speed down the line, Natalia knew she had to act quick to get that ball out. Just didn't quite make an accurate throw, and now a runner with a ton of speed is aboard. The error is going to go to Natalia Rodriguez on the throw. Yeah, I think that's right. Made a nice play to get there, but just couldn't set her feet in time. Jordan Rudd way late on her swing on the first pitch. Stolen bases is a story for Northwestern. In their lineup today, they have just one player who's been caught all season. That's Schellmeyer. Or sorry, two players. Yeah, Schellmeyer and Lewis have both been caught once. That's it. Three other players perfect on the season in addition to that deep bench they can go to. 0-1, oh, another called strike. And we saw them steal a couple times in the first game. Both throws were very close. The second one we believed was in time, but was called safe on the field. Regardless, puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Carson's arm looked great in that game, but still sometimes, you're, even if you make a good throw, if the jump was too good, you might not have a chance. 0-2, swinging a line drive to center field. Blair moving over. She's not going to make the play, and it's off the wall. Runners being waved around third. There's going to be a play at the plate, and Menez there. The throw is a little high. Bounces off Carson's glove. Throw down, and not in time yet. Didn't get the uh, the tag down, and just like that, Northwestern leads 1-0. Great hit by Jordan Rudd there. Just drove that ball into that right center gap. I mean, we know Lexi Blair has speed, as evidence. She hit an inside-the-park home run last game. She got to that one, read it right off the wall, but just ball was placed perfectly in that gap. Couldn't really feel it before it hit the wall, and the speed of both Lewis and Rudd getting shown off there. That's going to go down as an error on the catcher, Carson, or actually I think it's probably going to be an error on Jimenez. They put it up. We haven't seen the play. Yep, error on Julia Jimenez for the throw way off line, allowing the runner to move up to third. So now two errors already in this inning for Michigan. 1-0 the count, and again, that's the importance of, of good defense. And Jen Brundage already coming out to talk to Bobian because you know if you make that play from Rodriguez, you've only got a runner on second with two outs in the inning and no runs across. Now it's one run across, only one out, and a runner on third. So the speed causing a problem, and Michigan struggling to react right now. Yeah, Michigan genuinely had a chance to get... Rudd at third base as well. The throw from Carson was good. Taylor Bump just tried to put the tag right on uh, Jordan Rudd instead of just putting it on the bag and letting her slide into it. 1-0 count on Morgan Newport. Newport's got 21 strikeouts, second on the team. This is a big strikeout situation for Bobby, and if she could get one, there's a called strike on the outer edge. Her commands looked good so far, hitting the spots. Yeah, we saw her hit her spots all night on Friday. She was just very similar to last game, was kind of getting squeezed, both pitchers, including uh, the Northwestern pitcher, Danielle Williams. 1-1 one, one count, swing and a miss, chases a pitch way high. Now 1-2. and two. Newport a little antsy on that one. We'll see what Bobian dials up here. With the runner on third, the outfield is playing shallow. A hard hit line drive could potentially have a play at the plate. 1-2 high and outside. Uh, game has gone final in Minneapolis. Iowa knocks off the Gophers 3-1 in game one of that doubleheader. Gives both of these teams a little bit of a gift. 
2-2 count now on Newport. The wind up in the pitch, swing and a chopper off herself. Maybe called foul. Jordan Rudd not with a ridiculous amount of speed over there on third base, but a pass ball would score her, seems like. Field seems to have dried up a little bit. It rained pretty continuously throughout that first game. Looks like it's sprinkling a little bit now. 2-2 Two -two on the way. Swing and a miss. The changeup and the Bobian signature there completely catching Newport off balance and a very feeble pointless swing as it was going to be a called strike anyway and that is a big strikeout for Megan now two outs in the inning and an out any way you can get it ends the frame strands a runner at third and you only give up one run but Zedak's a tough hitter at the plate there's a called strike Angela Zedak now 276 on the year and on base of 356 though and the slugging just shy a 500 for a very nice OPS. Three homers, eight doubles, plenty of power in the left fielder's bat. Again, similar story to Shell Meyer. Struggled in game one on both ends. Oh, one is high. One and one. Over oh, three at the plate and head. Just kind of a misjudged ball in left field. Very similar to Shell Meyer's on the Lexi Blair Grand Slam. The double from Lexi was also kind yeah. of misread. 1-1, one, one. just off the outside edge, 2-1. and one. Northwestern's dugout very vocal and amped up. Yeah, we saw them be a huge factor in that game on Friday night last time. Bo Bean was out in the circle. They commanded the energy of the stadium. And as I said last game, pretty much seemed like a home game for a while for Northwestern. 2-1 off speed, chopped foul. Zedak way out in front yeah. of that one. I mean, Bobian is at her best when she's changing speeds between the fastball and the changeup. It's not as spin heavy of a pitcher as Starocco is. More power in Megan's game, but see what she goes to here trying to get second strikeout of the inning and get out of the frame after surrendering a run. It was an E6 followed by a double spanked into the gap. Mentioned going into the last game, Michigan was just a game and a half ahead of Northwestern in the Big Ten standings. 2-2 two -two fouled back. This one would be a huge win taking both games with this doubleheader. Yep, the lead chopped down to a half game last night, then restored to one and a half with the win here today. But they got to close out this doubleheader to <clears throat> ensure that they would leave the weekend still ahead of the Cats. 2-2 two -two on the way. Swing and a chop foul again. That one she just kind of hacked at. Got her in on the hands. I mean, you can tell that Bobian right now, if she doesn't make a mistake, is in the driver's seat because Zedek's just guessing, just trying to barely put the metal on the ball. I mean, we've seen pretty much every Northwestern hitter so far besides Jordan Rudd kind of guessing at whatever Bobian's going to throw. 2-2, Two -two, swinging a ground ball to short. Rodriguez there, throw across the diamonds in time. That's a nice play there after a tough error early in the inning for Nat Rod. And Northwestern gets a couple of errors in their favor, and a double brings in a run. They have a quick 1-0 lead in this game. We head to the bottom of the first. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Lexi Blair going to be first due up for the Michigan Wolverines. We saw her last game dominate at the plate, two for four with a grand slam and an RBI double, looking to continue that hot streak coming into game number two. And this is now Michigan's second chance to see Danielle Williams after yesterday. And we'll, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments she is able to make and, and what adjustments Michigan's hitters will be able to make. I mean, it, what's interesting here is that Dan well, Williams, despite being one of the best pitchers in the Big Ten two years ago, Michigan still had never seen her before yesterday. They never played Northwestern in that season two seasons ago. Michigan didn't draw the Cats in the regular season, and Northwestern lost to Minnesota in the semifinals of the Big Ten tournament. 
So it was the Gophers and not the Wildcats Michigan saw in that tournament title game. And last year, obviously, no Big Ten slate played. So this is the first you know, real weekend that Michigan has gotten to see some of these players, even though these Northwestern players are now mostly in their upper class years, including Williams. But yesterday was not a great showing for the Michigan Bats. We'll see what they can do today. One thing Michigan has to keep in the back of their mind is they laid off a lot of first pitch strikes. Daniel Williams was taking advantage of the fact that Michigan was being really patient up at the plate, but she was just leaving balls over, right over, right down the middle of the plate. And, you know, Michigan hitters, if they could get after these ones early, have potential grounds to see pitches that they really like. Michigan baseball is down to their last half inning to try and rally against Rutgers. They're trailing 4-2 to two in the ninth. They do have the tying run at the plate with one out right now. We'll keep you updated about that. So Lexi Blair stepping back in. Blair checks in. And here we go. The lefty Danielle Williams. First pitch, misses the zone. You know, Williams is another two-way player like Boyd and like Morgan Newport. Boyd is not playing in the lineup for this game, and her spot in the nine hole has been subbed out for her fellow pitcher, Williams. 1-0, also high, 2-0. Yeah, not exactly shocking. Boyd. Two-way player, mostly focused on the pitching end of things, only hitting 174 going into last game. So and The same can be said for Williams at 220, both anchoring that end of the order. 2-0 on the way. That one rides inside. Now 3-0. Michigan would love to get Lexi on and try to quickly get this run back. Williams just trying to find her spots here. 3-0, ball high, and that's a four-pitch walk. Danielle, Danielle Williams starts off on the wrong foot. Lexi on board. She's 6-for-6 six six in stolen base attempts this season, but of course we know about the arm. Or actually, no, it's Ashley Schultz behind home plate. My mistake there. Jordan Rudd is at the DP spot in this game. We haven't gone through the defense yet. It's Zedek, Shellmeyer, and Newport, same outfield. Dunlap, Nelson, Lewis, and Cochran, same infield. The only change defensively is behind home plate with Ashley Schultz in that spot. And there's the bunt laid down by Nat Rod. Quick throw over, and it's made in time by Williams. So the sacrifice moves the runner up, and now a runner in scoring position for Michigan's two big power hitters. Lou Allen followed by Taylor Bump. I would like to know the thought process behind subbing in Schultz on the defensive end. I mean, Jordan Rudd has looked spectacular back there. She caught Natalia Rodriguez stealing twice, one of Michigan's fastest players and most effective base stealers, and she was a wall back there last game. First pitch on the way. Nice off-speed delivery. Freezes Lou for a called strike, and it's interesting because this is only the fourth game started of the year for Ashley Schultz. An interesting time to get one of those starts. I mean, everyone needs a day off, but this is a huge series, and Rudd's defense has been such an asset in the first two games. 0-1 on the way, and there's a ball a little high, 1-1. One one. We obviously have not seen enough Northwestern softball to know what Schultz's arm is like compared to Rudd's. She could be a defensive ace, too. We don't really know, but tough to be better than what Rudd has been so far. Absolutely. 1-1 one, one off speed again, and another called strike. Williams... Changing speeds well there. Speed of Lexi Blair on second base. A single to the outfield would most likely score her. Taylor Bump in the on-deck circle. One and two the count. Blue's got to be in plate protection mode now. Pitch on the way is high, two and two. Blair taking a hefty secondary lead every time. Getting well down the line, almost halfway. Right in front of Maeve Nelson at shortstop. 2-2. Two, two, just misses. That's a gutsy take from Lou Allen. She is rewarded. And it's a 3-2 count now. Full count. One runner in scoring position and one out. Michigan standing with grounds to score a run here and tie it up. Northwestern 
holds the lead. Full count, swinging a ground ball past the third baseman. They're waving Lexi around. This is going to be a play at the plate, and it is not in time. That'll be an RBI double for Lou Allen just past the glove of a well-positioned Dunlap at third, and Michigan's tied it at one. Great slide there by Lexi Blair. Really, the slide was what made that play. Great throw from Zedak in left field, but Lexi slid off to the left side of the base, threw that left hand on it, and got right around the catcher, Schultz. And Michigan ties it up in the bottom of the first. Took him a long time to get anything looking like that off of Danwell Williams yesterday, and Michigan already has made a quick dent and even this game up, picking their defense up a little bit, and now Taylor Bump to the plate. Michigan again with a runner in scoring position as Lou Allen took second base on the throw home. First pitch called strike to Taylor. Bump in game one went one for three. No RBIs. Hannah Carson in the on deck circle. That one bounces in. Allen dancing around at second, but obviously not a big threat to get down to third unless it really gets past Schultz. Taylor Bump had a ball that just curved foul. Could have ended the game in the bottom of the six. Would have been a three-run homer. She did reach on a generous single in that second inning. Out in front of that one. Puts it foul. One and two. And it goes without saying that that Lou double was scorched because it was right at Dunlap, but she just didn't quite have the reaction time with how hard it was hit. Yeah, especially... Dunlap being a right-handed player, and that one hit to her backhand. She had to spin on that right knee to try to get it and couldn't get there in time. 1-2, bump way out in front on the off-speed pitch, and Williams comes back for a nice strikeout. Two outs in the inning now. Allen will stay at second, and it's Carson's turn to try and bring the go-ahead run in. Beautiful pitch from Danielle Williams right there. Dropped off the table at the last second. Well, unfortunately, it appears that Rutgers has defeated Michigan in baseball across the way at Ray Fisher Stadium. 4-2 there, so we go into a rubber match tomorrow on Sunday. There's a pitch a little high. You'll be on the call for that one. I'll be back here for softball tomorrow. 1-0 count on Hannah Carson. Game number one. Carson went one for four, but with a few productive at-bats moving runners. She takes the pitch a little low. Now ahead 2-0 and in the count. Lou will be going on contact, and if it gets to the outfield, may have an interesting play at the plate. Carson can get it down for a single. 2-0 hitters count on the way for the junior. Lefty Carson against the lefty Williams. That pitch high and outside. Now 3-0, and Lauren Essman waiting on deck. It's the walk to Blair to begin the game that ended up bringing around Michigan's run here in this bottom of the first. Both teams have tallied a run in the first. Michigan trying to make it two here in the bottom half. Runner on second, two outs, but a 3-0 count. First or 3-0 there is a called strike for the first strike. Danielle Williams, her control not quite there like it was last night. Last night she looked absolutely dominant. Only allowed two total base runners in the first two times through the order for Michigan. Both of those. 3-1 off speed. Another called strike. We're Natalia Rodriguez. First time Nat Rod got hit in that front elbow and walked her second time up. But other than that, Williams was perfect. Count runs full on Carson. 3-2 way out in front again. And a couple strikeouts on the changeup there from Williams comes back to retire the side. But Michigan gets a big run in the bottom of the first game is tied, and we head to the second inning. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. That change up for Williams is a lot of movement, breaking right at the plate, a pitch that Lauren Boyd in that last matchup didn't really have, or at least not to that extent. Michigan Handers didn't have to face that in game number one, but... Williams using it to her advantage as we head to the top of the second. This one's tied up one to one. Well, you see right there in that, you know, first inning, basically mirror images of each other in that both have runners get aboard after some mistakes in 
Northwestern's case, a walk. In Michigan's case, an error. And then you have the number three hitters for both teams able to bring runs around on really hard hit doubles. And then, of course, in both cases, the pitcher gets some strikeouts to work out of it. So eerily similar. It is going to be 6 7 8 9 for the Wildcats coming up. It's going to be the shortstop, Maeve Nelson, first, followed by the catcher, Schultz, in the seventh spot. Cochran, the first baseman, hitting eighth, and the pitcher, Danielle Williams, wrapping up the order for the Wildcats before heading back to the top of the order. Both teams strand a runner in scoring position, and those are both really big because runs you think are probably going to be at a premium in this game, and both pitchers able to wiggle out of jams that could have been worse. Sierra Kirsten back in left field. We saw Lexi Voss play the last two innings. We, she was moved to right field after coming into pinch hit for Kirsten, two productive at-bats. Maeve Nelson stands in there. First pitch on the way. Strike at the knees. Looks like a smaller crowd here for game number two. The stands, at least in front of us, were a little bit more populated and a few fans packed up and went home, it appears. But still a, a healthy crowd on both sides. All friends and family members. 0-1, swinging a fly ball to right field, arcing foul, and it will go into the Michigan bullpen. We saw Maeve Nelson hit that monster home run to left center field off Alex DiRocco in game number one. Just about the only thing that Northwestern got in that first game off of Storocco. It was behind 0-2 just like this, and she turned on a pitch and hit it to left field over the fence. 0-2 count, wind up the pitch, swing and a looper that will drop fair down the right field line. Nelson takes a hard turn, but will stay at first with a single again. Just a good piece of hitting, shortening up the swing and just poking it just inside the foul line for a leadoff hit. Nelson got a little greedy there, rounding first base. Could have potentially gotten picked back off if Hogenrod wanted to take a shot, but gets back harmlessly, and that will bring up Ashley Schultz. Schultz has not had a lot of at-bats this season. Only 11, but she's 0 for in that span. One RBI has been hit by a pitch. Six strikeouts, attempts to lay down a bunt, and it goes well foul. Schultz just kind of pokes at that one, and... Glances off the bottom of the bat, trying to advance. And, you know, when you're a hitter looking for that first hit, even doing something productive like a sacrifice bunt to move a runner over could be huge for your confidence, just putting the ball in play. Owen won the count. Bunt shown again. That one laid down. Bump only one play in Michigan. Textbook put out there. Runner moves up to second. And the concern, I guess, is, okay, you used... Cochran, or you used Schultz, who wasn't much of a hitter, to move him up, but now you got Cochran at the plate, and Williams after that, neither of them, you know, this isn't the meat of your order. And you're looking for a big hit now from a couple inconsistent hitters on the year. Yeah, with a pitcher like Megan Bobian, you know, runs coming easily are an oddity. You know, yesterday she struggled a little bit with her command, and Northwestern was able to take advantage of some defensive mistakes from Michigan, but... And that pitch, they say, was fouled off, and then it hopped away from Carson, but the runner obviously can't advance. If there's one thing Northwestern's very, very good at, and we've said this a few times, is capitalizing when they get runners on and capitalizing on an opponent's mistakes. They did that yesterday, and they did it in the first game after... Got a little bit of a, a fortunate break on a call at second base that extended the inning, and then they had a two-run homer. Those were their only runs they scored. 0-1 on the way, called strike. Just can't give the Wildcats an inch. They'll take a foot, you may say. Yeah, this Wildcats team, very good. There's a reason why they're at the top half and the top tier of this Big Ten conference. 0-2 the count. The wind up, the pitch. Ooh, just outside. That was close. Carson held it for a while. Bobian trying to paint the corners there. She did a really nice job of that last night. Trying to go back to it. 
The strike zone today has been rather tight for yep. both teams. Extremely consistent in that first game, albeit tight. And it's not seemed much wider in this one. One, two. That time she hits the outside edge for a called strike three. Two outs now in the inning. A little bit of a delayed call. Carson held that one for a long time, but Michigan fortunate enough to get through that one. That's going to bring up the nine batter, Danielle Williams, the pitcher. So two outs, one runner in scoring position over there on second base. It's Maeve Nelson. Well, if Williams wants to give herself a lead, she's got the opportunity to do so right here. Pitcher helping herself. She can bring this run in. First pitch coming. Just misses, 1-0. As I mentioned with Lauren Boyd in the lineup last game, being a pitcher in the lineup gives you a unique perspective, being able to see the strike zone from both sides, knowing what's going to hit and what's not. 1-0 count. There's a strike at the knees. Carson keeps jumping up to watch Nelson down there at second. I mean, maybe Nelson is not one of the key base stealing threats. She's two for two on the year, but certainly stealing third is not going to be an easy task. And I don't know why you would run into an out potentially when you've got a runner in scoring position in what's expected to be a low scoring game. 1-1 one, one on the way, swing and a miss. Williams chases a high offering there and a little late swing as well. One saying I've always kind of lived by in baseball and softball is you never want to make the first or third out of an inning at third base. Yeah. So 1-2 to Danielle Williams. See what Bobian goes to here. The wind up, the pitch, swing and a looper that will go foul. Just yep. getting a piece was Williams. That side wall on the third baseline getting some work today. Yeah. Bobian trying to strand a second runner in scoring position today. She left a runner at third in the first. Trying to do that with a runner here on th second in the second. Top of the order due up for the Wildcats after this. 1-2 swing and a roller over to second. And Mena's got to make a quick play, but the throw is accurate. And they get the out. Side is retired. Bobian keeps the game even at one, and she'll send her hitters back up there for the bottom of the second inning. Our score, Michigan 1 Northwestern 1, you're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. This one moving right along. It's going to be 6-7-8-9 for the Wolverines. Due up, Esmond, Jimenez, Hoganrod, and Sierra Kirsten back in the lineup for game number two. Lauren Esmond in that first one. Looked as good as ever. Had a double. That was also an RBI. She's been on fire lately. Hitting 351, second highest average on the team, just behind Lexi Blair, who's hitting 451. Well, looking at the weather right now, it really, I mean, it looks like a, a little drizzle, but not much, and certainly a little lighter than it was in the first game. And a lot lighter than expected. Game number one was moved up to a start time of noon, an hour earlier than initially scheduled, and hopes that they could get one game in before they got rained out of the doubleheader. They were... Pleasantly surprised with the forecast today, and tomorrow no rain in the forecast, so it looks like this four-game set will get through with no real problems whatsoever. Besides being a little damp, but that's it. Catcher Schultz back there behind the plate, so as we talked about before, Jordan Rudd, while she is in the lineup, is getting a break behind the plate. As the timer hits zero and Northwestern has a quick huddle on the mound, Lauren Esman stepping up to the plate for her first at-bat of this contest. The sophomore looking to get her team going here in the bottom of two. Esman, the lefty hitter against lefty pitcher Williams. I think there's some communication going on between the defense looking to get set up and Williams is trying to put something into her pocket. Never easy to do that. Baseball, softball pants are extremely tight, and those pockets don't open terribly easily. Essman checks into the batter's box, and we're ready to go. First pitch on the way floats high. We were talking about this in the first game. I don't remember which hitter it was that was standing way back for Northwestern. 
Espen's standing pretty far up for Michigan in the batter's box. She's got the back foot uh, almost you know, parallel to the center of the plate and the front foot close to the upper part of the batter's box. She waves and misses one and one. Yeah, the complete opposite of Morgan Newport yeah, that Newport. we were referencing in that first game. Kind of an unconventional stance situated way in the back and the right foot near the side of the batter's box. There is a little bit of action down in the northwestern bullpen. Doesn't really look like anyone seriously warming. Just a little soft toss maybe to keep warm. Essman again swinging for the fences and again misses. She's got that power for... Uh, Four doubles, one triple, and then the monstrous home run last week to right field. That double we saw last game down the left field line, a short, concise swing. One, two, called strike three on the outer edge. Williams hits her spot there, and a good strikeout to begin the second. It's going to bring up Julia Menez. Going back to that last at-bat, Lauren Esman, two big, long cuts. Like you said, kind of swinging for the fences, but... Besides that monster home run we saw to right field, her most effective hits have just been short, concise swings, just letting the pitcher do the work for her. That double down the line in game number one, a pitch on the outside corner, just threw her hands at it. Menes was one for three in the first game. She's out in front there, puts it foul. Haley Hoganrod over in the on-deck circle. Jimenez and Hoganrod went back-to-back -back with two big singles in game number one to kind of get that rally going, which eventually led to the Lexi Blair Grand Slam. 0-1 count. And Jimenez way out in front. We continue to see Williams use the off-speed extremely well. She's ahead 0-2. Whoever that is down in the Northwestern bullpen, they're not wearing their uniform. They've got a sweatshirt on over it. Now they're taking the sweatshirt off it appears. Danielle Williams did throw the entire game the other night, so could potentially be a little bit tired. Don't think it's a major concern, though. Workload as an ace is pretty high. There's a swing and a miss on a pitch way out of the zone. Jimenez and Espen looking very off kilter in these first two at-bats. Williams collects a couple strikeouts, and now we've got the number... Eight hitter, Hoganrod do up. Yeah, two up, two down as Hoganrod, the fifth year senior, steps up into the box and tries to put something together with two outs for the Wolverines in the bottom half of the second inning. First pitch on the way, and she lays down a tough bunt, and it just rolls foul. Great idea by Hoganrod there. Sneaky bunt trying to get one down using her speed to her advantage, and if that one did stay fair, she was more than clearly safe. Yep. Just with the spin rolled foul. Sierra Kirsten, as I said, back in the lineup in the on-deck circle. So with the count 0-1 and two outs, Hoganrod steps back in. She's out in front again, 0-2. That pitch looked a little low as well. We're seeing glimpses of what we saw last night in Danielle Williams' last appearance. This Michigan team had no answers for the stuff she brought to the table. 0-2, that one bounces in. That one bouncing well before the plate. Seems to have been a theme with Williams throughout this series so far. Series split 1-1. Northwestern taking the game 4-1 last night. Michigan taking game number two just minutes ago, 7-2. 1-2. Good job by Haley to lay off on the rise ball there. 2-2. Two and two. Northwestern defense playing pretty much straight up. Hoganrod, not too much of a power hitter, but definitely has speed. 2-2, two, two, fouls it back. One of the stories to talk about with these two teams is the imbalance in the schedule, and Northwestern's played three more games than Michigan. Michigan had to vacate a weekend against MSU. They're on track to make up two of those four games, one of which they've already played, but as a result, they 
have three last games played than the Cats. 2-2, Haley lays down a bunt that goes foul, and that will be a strike three to end the inning. Williams strikes out the side. Strong bounce back inning for her. And we go to the top of the third, tied at one. We've seen Michigan have success with that sneaky bunt on a two-strike count, but that one goes foul and sends Hoganrod back to the dugout. So like you said, tied one-to-one -one as we're moving right along here into the top of the third inning. Northwestern one run on two hits and two Michigan errors. Michigan one run on one hit. And as I was saying, you know, Michigan, those three last games, they were against a pretty bad MSU team. And, you know, if you're in Michigan's perspective, if you had played those three games, you'd like your chances to have won all three. And instead, your lead over Northwestern would be three full games as opposed to one and a half. Obviously, winning percentage is the final determinant, but it's definitely something to think about. One possible name that could be warming up down there is Lauren Dvorak, a pitcher who's played a, a couple appearances this season. Yes, well, if she does come out of there without the jacket on, we'll try to get a number and a name. I actually, I think sure. that's Sydney Suple. It looks like due to the hair. And, the, and yeah, Dvorak is a righty, Supley is a lefty, and that pitcher down there is a lefty. So that's Sydney Supley, we have to assume. Again, not really sure why she's warming, and Williams is well in command of this game at the moment, but interesting development nonetheless, maybe just staying loose for later potentially. There is one more game tomorrow, which yep. could potentially see Danielle Williams in again. It is going to be... Skyler Schellmeyer up first. Schellmeyer swings and hits this one up the middle for a base hit. Michigan playing in, of course, with the speedy runner, and that is help to her advantage as she shoots a single up the gap between the shortstop and the second baseman. I think if Rodriguez is playing straight up, she probably would have had a play on that ball and maybe a routine play, but the alignment helps Schellmeyer there. Rodriguez laid out for that one just a few inches short of coming up with it. I do agree with you. Had she been playing straight up, I think that might be a routine ground ball to her left hand. So a leadoff runner is on, and it's a speedy runner in that in Schalmeyer. And Bobian again has got a deal with runners on base. First pitch way high. Carson jumps up, trying to keep the runner on. This Northwestern offense, the top of the Big Ten, and they're not like Minnesota. Minnesota is a very good offense because they pop the ball and hit a lot of homers. Northwestern's the opposite. They don't hit a ton of homers, but they put a lot of pressure on you, and they're really good at bringing runs across once they get them on base. 1-0. Check swing did not go. 2-0. Speaking of runs, Rachel Lewis, the one to score back in the top of the first inning, reached on a throwing error from Natalia Rodriguez. It was... A one hop that Llewellyn couldn't quite scoop up. Megan's got to be careful now. And a 2-0 count, nobody out and already a runner on first. Facing the meat of the order. Lewis at the plate. Swings and hits this one foul. Lewis then did score off the double off the wall, which turned in to Jordan Rudd ending up on third base on the throwing error from Julia Jimenez. Both of Michigan's errors coming in that top half of the first inning, just defensive lapses allowing Northwestern to take that early lead. They got one run back, so as I said, still tied 1-1 as the 2-1 is on the way from Bobby. And the runner looked like she was going, but decides to stay at first. Called strike, 2-2. Two two. Big strikeout here, could keep the runner at first and out of scoring position for the Big hitters coming up. You know Schellmeyer can run. She's six for seven on the season in steal attempts. Lewis herself's got a lot of power. 2-2 two -two on the way, way out in front of it, and just rolls it over foul. Hit that one almost behind her. She <laughs> was so far out in front. Yeah. I'm, on, I'm honestly amazed how she was able to pull that one off. So far out in front. Hits the wall directly behind her. 
I will say Michigan's dugout has not gotten much action. The Northwestern dugout's gotten a lot of balls over by them today, including that one. 2-2 two is another foul right down that line. One foul ball last night ended up going in to the Northwestern dugout on kind of a line drive from one of the lefty hitters. Count stays at 2-2. Two and two. Natalia Rodriguez and Julia Jimenez playing deep. Playing for a double play here. We saw them turn one for the first two outs of the last inning in game number one is that pitch goes for ball three. Full count for Rachel Lewis on the way. Last out of that game comes on a Taylor Bump diving grab on a bunt that was popped up. Bump's done a good job to get some of that dirt off her uniform. Doesn't look too bad despite how uh, dirty she was after making that play. 3-2, big pitch here. Swing and a miss. And Bobian gets a big first down in the inning. And the runner stays at first, which will bring Jordan Rudd to the plate. Very good hitter, and Rachel Lewis sat down a huge weight off the Michigan defense's shoulders. But a name that does scare you, of course, is Jordan Rudd. That double, that RBI double off the right field wall in her first time up. She was 0 for 2 in the first game. Did draw a walk. Frozen on the changeup for a called strike outer edge. Both teams have struggled hitting the changeup so far in this one. Both pitchers just have everybody guessing. Two of the best in the conference going at it right now. Morgan Newport, who we were talking about a moment ago in the on-deck circle. 0-1, swing and a high fly ball, left field. This could be trouble. Back to the track, to the wall, and it's gone, a home run. Jordan Rudd continues to batter Megan Bobian in this game. A two-run shot, and it's 3-1 Wildcats. Jordan Rudd in her second at bat. Now with three RBIs on that first RBI double in the first inning, and now in the top of the third, a two-run home run. She's on fire right now. Michigan is having a meeting in the circle. Bobby a little frustrated with herself. Now four hits on the game for the Cats. That'll bring Newport to the plate. There's a pitch down and in, 1-0. We've seen Bobby and struggle with the long ball so far this year, and that's kind of been the story of her struggles. She settles back in, the 1-0 on the way towards Morgan Newport. The wind-up, this one change-up, got her waving. Yeah, Newport out in front there, and the count evens. Bobby and just needs to settle back in and, and get these next two outs. Checks the wristband. Supley in the bullpen for Northwestern now fully warming up. And a bunt is laid down. Bump comes over. Got to make a quick play, and it's made accurately. Two outs in the inning. Routine bunt coverage there from Michigan. Executed to a T. Great crash by Taylor Bump, and great positioning on the inside portion of the bag by Julia Jimenez to get out number two, so... Two outs, no runners on, and that's going to bring up Zedak to the plate. Grounded out to shortstop her last time up in the first inning. Bobian checking the wrist coach now, spinning the ball in the left hand. Now to the windup. And Zedak way out in front there. Does not make contact, and it's 0-1. Bobian's changeup has been... Practically untouchable so far here in game number two. Zedak taking her time now. Settling back in, positioned way in the back of that batter's box. 0-1, oh, another very bad looking swing. 0-2. Oh, Jordan Rudd now in these two games she's faced Bobby and is now four for six with five RBIs against Megan. Two doubles and a home run. Youch. Yeah, Rudd's kind of had her number. <laughs> is the 0-2, two, two out set to deliver. Here it is. Oh, boy. Another 
ugly swing and miss. Not even close. And a three-pitch strikeout ends the inning. But the Wildcats get right back to it. Jordan Rudd continues to pound Megan Vobian. A two-run homer puts Northwestern up 3-1. to one, And we head to the bottom of the third. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Angela Zedak, usually a very poised hitter with, you know, a long, precise swing. And those ones, just three change-ups got her waving at the wind, just kind of throwing her hands at it, hoping to hit something way out in front. Bobian dominated that at bat. As we said, heading to the bottom of the third now. Michigan looking to get two back. That came off the two-run home run from Jordan Rudd. Score sits it. 3-1 to one in favor of Northwestern. Northwestern three runs on four hits and two Michigan errors. Michigan still only one run on one hit. That hit coming from Lou Allen. It's going to be nine and then top. Sierra Kirsten, then Lexi Blair, and Natalia Rodriguez. At 9-1-2. Kirsten had two at-bats last game, went over 2 and then... Lexi Voss came in to pinch hit for her and played out the remainder of that game, had two at-bats of her own. Kirsten hitting 260 on the season, has struggled a lot with the strikeout, 19 Ks so far. Defensive lineup for the Wildcats, same as it was. Schultz is still behind the plate. And stepping back into that left-handed batter's box is Kirsten, looking for redemption here in game number two. Pitch on the inside corner for a called strike. Lexi Blair over there in the on-deck circle. Oh, boy. Iowa already up 3-0 on Minnesota in the top of the first of game two of their doubleheader. 0-1 on the way. It's a ball 1-1. One and one. Three-run home run for Lecker off of Amber Pfizer has put the Hawkeyes on top. Kirsten gets a piece and fouls it back. Minnesota dropping two games would be huge for both of these teams. As of right now, it's kind of a three-way race for the lead in the Big Ten between Michigan, Northwestern, and Minnesota. Northwestern Minnesota at, or Northwestern and Michigan rather, kind of at the top of that as pitch number th four goes by. Ball two, so we're evened out. 2-2 two -two count on Kirsten. The wind up and a foul back. Kirsten stringing together a solid at bat right now. Sierra Kirsten's swing is Extremely consistent. Every pitch, no matter what, seems like it's kind of the same swing, just very repeatable, very smooth. The wind up, the 2 2 swing and a miss, change up in the dirt. Kirsten with kind of a half swing there, half hearted attempt at touching that change up. Both teams, both pitchers rather. Been able to dominate with the off-speed so far in this one. That is going to bring up Lexi Blair. She walked her first time up and then scored off the RBI from Lou Allen. Looking to continue that red-hot performance she had in game one. A grand slam and an RBI double. There's a pitch high. Lexi hitting 451 for a team high batting average and team high or high between either of these teams. Corners playing up. 1-0 and Lexi hits this one softly into the infield. Going to be a tough play. Not in time. And Blair beats it out down the line for an infield single. Safe to say pretty much anybody else on the field right now that would have been an out except Lexi Blair showing off the wheels. The fact that it rained consistently throughout the first game also 
probably has something to do with it. That ball hit the ground, and Maeve Nelson was waiting for it to bounce up into her glove, and it just kind of died. She had to run up a little bit closer and shift her footwork around. But with one out and after the infield single, that is going to bring up Natalia Rodriguez. Sack bunt in her first time up to move Lexi Blair to second base. First pitch, Nat Rod fouls it back. In game number one, Rodriguez went one for four with an RBI. In the on deck circle, Lou Allen responsible for the one Michigan run on the RBI that sent Lexi Blair home. 0-1 on the way from Williams. Pitch high. Williams after dominating Michigan in game number one where they really didn't have any answer for her. Hasn't looked quite as great so far in this one. Michigan put up one run in the bottom of the first. 1-1 one, one coming. Rodriguez just taps this one. Williams alertly gets over and makes the play. Runner gets down to second, two outs. This is another opportunity for Lou Allen to knock a big run in. Just start chipping at the Northwestern two-run edge. Check swing from Natalia Rodriguez. Ball rode in on her hands and went off the handle. Unfortunate turn of events, but productive in the least. Lexi Blair now in scoring territory. Allen at the plate. First pitch coming, check swing, foul back to the screen. RBI double in her last time up. Ball hit with some heat right down the third base line. Mac Dunlap, the third baseman, couldn't get to it in time. She's playing right down that line again. 0-1 low, Blair... Healthy lead off the bag. As each player takes their kind of ready steps to get themselves locked in and some momentum going towards home plate, Mac Dunlap takes an interesting approach. Starts with her back to the third baseline for two steps and then pulls the left leg forward as that pitch goes by for ball two. Two and one the count now. Outfield playing right near the warning track is Lou Allen. Obviously known to be a power hitter. Six home runs on the season as this one's popped up. Yep, that'll be a routine play. And there is Lewis. That'll do it. Michigan gets an infield hit. Runner moves up to second, but they strand one in scoring position. Our score, Northwestern 3, Michigan 1. Headed to the top of the fourth. Bobby and will go back out there. This sure. game moving right along already through three full innings here. A couple, Katie Perry plays through the yeah. speakers. A couple strenuous innings for each pitcher, but a, a few fast ones as well. I mean, Bobian's looked fine, except when she faces Jordan Rudd. That's really the only problem. You look at the other hits, have generally not been super tough contact and hasn't been getting hit hard outside of that, but, you know, two big mistakes to ride resulting in all three Northwestern runs, an RBI double and a two RBI home run. Megan Bobian will head back out there for her fourth inning of work in this one. Ninth total inning through this series. She threw the first five last night and then Sarah Schaefer came in to close out the last two. Something that Subi said, Sarah Schaefer, in her limited amount of work last night, looked pretty good, was really well commanding the corner, something that both Danielle Williams and Megan Bobian struggled with, the two aces for these teams, and Sarah Schaefer came in and handled it with no problem. Both the infield and outfield break their huddles, and we are set to go. It's Maeve Nelson due up first. The shortstop had a single back in her first time up. Ended up getting stranded on second base. Holds up the hand for time and now settling back in. The wind up from Bobian. First pitch, called strike on the outer edge.
Obian just going right at it there. Maeve Nelson a home run in game number one off Alex Duraco. Oh, one on the way, fouled back, 0-2. Hannah Carson will run up and grab it off the back screen. Over there in the on-deck circle is Ashley Schultz, still looking for her first hit of the season. No action in either bullpen right now. It seems Sidney Supley is heading back to the Northwestern dugout after a little bit of work. 0-2 bounces in, 1-2. Nice stop by Hannah Carson. Wouldn't really matter, nobody on base, but always good to get those reps in. Northwestern currently hitting 4 for 13 as a team right now. In their second time through the order. 1-2 on the way, swinging a grounder over to short. Rodriguez got to make a quick play. And it is in time. Nice extension from Lou Allen. Lou doing a nice job of pinning that ball to the ground to stop it from taking an awkward hop on her. One out, Ashley Schultz steps to the plate in search of her first hit of the season. She sacrificed bunted her last time up. Obviously with the leadoff runner, Getting put out. We're going to see her swing here. Be the first time today we get a look at that. It's called strike. And again, Bobian's commands look pretty sharp in this game. Made one uh, has, you know, no walks. I remember one three ball count, but nobody's gotten on through that. Four strikeouts. Very solid so far. 0 1 coming. That one tails outside. Schultz, a sophomore from Aurora, Illinois. He's playing catcher in this one in place of Jordan Rudd. That pitch low. Two and one. Rudd still, of course, in the lineup as we saw her hit that RBI double off the wall, but getting a little break on the defensive end. 2-1 on the way, swing and a foul back. In the on-deck circle is Nikki Cochran, who will be followed up by Danielle Williams. So 7-8-9 for the Wildcats due up with one out. Nobody on here in the top of the fourth inning. 2-2 two two the count. Obian winds up. The pitch, swing and a miss. Powers it by Schultz, and she's now got two down, trying to get a quick inning here. Put the hitters right back up there. Great pitch from Bobby in there to strike out Schultz and send her back to the dugout, still without a hit so far this season. And Nikki Cochran stepping up to the plate now, the first baseman. And this is exactly what Bobby would want, just a much quicker inning. The only She has not had a 1-2-3 inning yet. That pitch bounces in, and it got a piece of the umpire Barfus. And the coaches for Northwestern are going to come over and talk to Cochran as well as the umpire. The other umpire, Erdahl, from first walking over, and a trainer is out from Michigan. Umpire shaking that right arm, squeezing his hand. Looks like it caught him. Kind of in the wrist, Bobian lost control of that when it bounced up and passed the right shoulder of Hannah Carson. We got any news on that Minnesota Iowa game, Drain? Uh, still three nothing in the bottom of the first now. Long first inning. Home plate umpire grabbing. A quick drink of water, just making sure he's okay before we continue play. Two outs, a scoreless inning here would be huge for Michigan. It would only be the second one out of the four. It would send them back out on the offensive attack. 
do up for Michigan is the real middle of their order. Taylor Bump, Hannah Carson, and Lauren Essman, four, five, six, are due up for the Wolverines when they get back into the dugout. Count is 1-0. and oh. Only pitch was that skipper that got up on the home plate umpire. Now, finally, it looks like we're ready to get back to the action. Still a little sprinkle of rain out there, but nothing too bad. One and oh the count. Wind up the pitch. And that one is tapped in fair territory. Carson quick throw down, and that is a really nice and easy one, two, three inning for Megan Bobian. Halfway through this game, headed to the bottom of the fourth, Northwestern three, Michigan one. You're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. I don't think that ball could have been hit shorter if Nikki Cochran tried, handcuffed, just went right off the handle right above her hands and dropped dead in the dirt. The dirt a little soft as it has been raining for about the last four hours now. Seems like it's just been kind of constant, real, real light, but consistent. So as I just said a minute ago, four, five, six, do up for the Wolverines. It's going to be Bump, Carson, and Esman, followed by Jimenez, Hoganrod, and Kirsten before we're heading back to the top of the order. Michigan in search of some more runs and some more hits. Only one and two of those, respectively, the lead for Northwestern, three to one. You were just tuning in to WCBN Sports coverage of Michigan softball. We would like to thank you for listening. And, of course, this game is being simulcast, our audio at least, on BTN+. Plus. Michigan took game one of this doubleheader, a score of 7-2. to two. They trail this one 3-1. to one. You know, Daniel, Daniel Williams, we talk about this, is you know, really used to pitching in, in tight games. Talk about Northwestern this year. They... Got swept by Minnesota kind of stunningly a couple weeks ago, but those were really the tail of the two games against uh, Danielle Williams. They were very close against Boyd and Newport. It was kind of ugly where Minnesota jumped all over those pitchers, but Williams in those two games was terrific. Cut right through a very good Minnesota order, but her team just couldn't give her any run support, and they lost both of those games. But she's used to pitching in these tight, games as they are when you have a couple of really good pitchers face off but she hasn't looked as, as strong as yesterday where she was just absolutely dominant. Michigan's gotten some decent swings and some base runners through walks as well as Taylor Bump takes a ball one and Bump was the only hitter to do anything against Williams last night. Yeah Bump with a solo home run that kind of put some energy into this Michigan team and well, I know. a little sign of life. Fouls it off. Yeah, Daniel Williams does a great job of just keeping high-octane offenses at bay. As we mentioned earlier, that Minnesota team wins a lot of games by scoring runs at a pretty high clip, loves the long ball, loves explosive action. And Williams puts that to an end. 1-1, one, one, bump, swings, and hits this one. It's going to be another one on the foul line, and oh, it's foul. Ooh, that was close. That one, yeah. <laughs> that was that was even closer than the last one. I thought it might be a homer, but obviously the third base umpire's got a lot clearer of a view than we do. And it just arced on the wrong side of that foul pole. And the event staff trying to dig it out of that tree. Yeah, if that one missed, it couldn't have been more than by more than a foot. I think Taylor Bump hitting that one as high as she did might have been she Her swings in, there. slow roller over to third. There's going to be no play. It's going to be an infield single. Not a long ball, but it's a leadoff runner, and the tying run now comes to the plate. Mac Dunlap covered a lot of ground there, kind of a do-or-die scenario, went off the tip of her glove and scoots past Maeve Nelson. So Taylor Bump, after what could have been a home run, reaches safely at first base, no outs, and that's going to bring up Hannah Carson. We're going to have a base runner. So Taylor Bump. Heads back to the dugout, and Audrey LeClaire comes out to run for her, the sophomore from Phoenix, Arizona. Coach Carol Hutchins has a quick few words for Hannah Carson, just giving her some pointers. 
You're not going to get too many base runners off of Williams, and Michigan's left a couple on in this game. They're going to need to bring some in at some point. This is a good time to do that with the leadoff runner on. And some pretty solid hitters coming up. Carson Esman and Annie Menez. Carson struck out swinging back in the first inning in her first time up. First pitch on the way. She checks her swing, and they appeal down to the third base umpire who's standing very close to the second base bag. Can't imagine. <laughs> <laughs> they had much better of an angle than the home plate umpire from that perspective, but they said she did not go 1-0. Both corner umpires play have been playing really close to the Northwestern defenders in this one as Hannah Carson pops this one up in foul territory. Mac Dunlap runs over and is held up by her own team at the edge of the dugout. And Game number one, if you missed it, Taylor Bump ran over for a similar play and ended up slipping into... The Northwestern dugout in the first inning had a brief intermission as she yeah, kind of walked off an injury. Kind of looked like she was on a sled there, went right down the the steps. You know, a fan with a checker umbrella is going to pick up that foul ball, and Carson's well out in front of that off-speed delivery, one and two. Audrey LeClaire with good speed over there at first base. We're going to have a quick timeout. Not sure about what. Hatch will go over and talk to Carson, try to get her to line it up a little better. Carson struck out swinging in her first plate appearance and hasn't looked much better here in the second. Still very off balance. Wouldn't be surprised to see Daniel Williams go to that change up here. She was able to dominate the bottom portion of this Michigan lineup the first time through with that off-speed pitch. With no outs, Hannah Carson at least looking to move the runner over into scoring position. One and two the count. Sorry to do a nice job of that in game one. A hard hit ball down the first baseline put a runner in scoring position who eventually did score. Here's the one, two. She swings and scorches this one right over to first. They're going to try to get a double play. Not going to have a play, but a really nice defensive effort from Cochran leads to a fielder's choice. 3 6 on the putout. Nabs, the lead runner. Carson got a good swing on that ball, but hit it on the ground and right at a Northwestern player. Kind of unfortunate break from Michigan right there. Audrey LeClaire had to kind of stop in her tracks as soon as she took off in the bag so the ball wouldn't hit her. That one coming right for her before Cochran made the diving stop. And a heads up play by Cochran to nab the lead runner. Now Esman up to the plate. She had a good at bat her first time up. It struck out looking. On a beautiful pitch. That one gets away. And Carson will move on down to second as it had evaded the glove of Ashley Schultz. So Williams is a wavering a little bit in these last couple innings. And in this inning, we already saw a darn near home run down the left field line. A hard hit ball for the first out. Michigan maybe getting a little bit better sense of how to approach Williams. 1-0 on the way. Change up freezes Essman 1-1. One there is some more action down in the Northwestern bullpen. It is not Sydney Supley. She's in the dugout. Looks like a right-hander. We'll give you the name if we can in a minute. It's going to be either Boyd or Dvorak. You'd think it's probably Dvorak. 1-1 one, one on the way. Esman takes it high, 2-1. and one. Esman. Struck out looking her first time up, waved at two change-ups, and then got caught in her tracks. Michigan with potential to put one across, though, with Hannah Carson in scoring position as she waves at that one for strike number two. Yeah, a little late there. I mean, this has been the case for all the hitters against both pitchers in this game. Just guessing a lot of times. Out in front of the changeup, way behind the fastball, off-balance swings. Only a couple hitters each way have been able to really time it up. 2-2 coming. 
Swing and a miss. She got the timing right there, just didn't hit it. So with two outs, that's going to bring up Julia Jimenez with a runner in scoring position and a game where you know a pitcher like Daniel Williams is dealing. Michigan cannot afford to leave runners in scoring position. The score lies three to one currently. Jimenez now to the plate. She struck out swinging her first time up. Carson down there at second. We going on contact with two outs. Jimenez way out in front there. The off speed for Danielle Williams. A variety of pitches has been incredible so far in this one. Michigan hitters just having a really tough time reading it out of the hand. And a lot of time, like we've said, they've just been kind of guessing, just waving their bats at it, hoping to come up with something. All one count. Swing and a miss. Yeah, Jimenez does not look locked in right now. Totally guessing at the moment. Got to step out and try to shake it off. Shorten the swing and see if she can make contact. It's been pretty good and tough to strike out. Only four on the year entering the game. Make it five with the first one in this game. 0-2 fouls it back. Five total strikeouts and 70 or 83 at bats. So, yeah, Jimenez and Lexi Blair are very similar in the fact that they rarely strike out if they do get out. They're going to put the ball in play, which would be very useful here as Northwestern's defense hasn't looked great so far today. In either game. 0-2, that one bounces in. It gets away again. Carson moves up, and now you're in a situation where pretty much any base hit is going to bring in Carson as long as it leaves the infield and isn't a play that could keep the runner at third. One and two now, and you also, with two wild pitches in this inning, have to worry if you're Ashley Schultz about another changeup that could flutter away from you. One, two, boy. Swing and a miss. Jimenez had absolutely no idea what pitch that was, and it is a strike three. Williams strands another base runner. Michigan's left three on, and they trail 3-1 as we head to the top of the fifth. Got a leadoff single, and couldn't bring it around. Bobian will go back out there to begin the top of the fifth. Northwestern and Michigan playing here at Alumni Field. Cats three, Wolverines one. It's going to be Danielle Williams in the top of the order. So it's going to be 9-1-2, Danielle Williams, Skylar Schellmeyer, and then Rachel Lewis. I'd love to get another 1-2-3 inning so you don't have to face Rudd with anybody aboard. Yeah, Jordan Rudd, really the only one that has been doing anything in terms of production on the offensive end. She's been unstoppable, though. When you look at Jordan Rudd's Stats so far in this one, two hits with a double and a home run and three RBIs responsible for all of Northwestern's runs. And like we said earlier, she's currently five for six against Megan Bobie and in this series, she's had her number. As expected, Taylor Bump back into the game at third base. The ground through comes out and Quick throw some dry dirt on the pitcher's mound. We saw we saw him do it a few times early in game one as it was raining a little bit harder and it got a little mushy. We saw now they're gonna rake it so that really it's just that vertical column in the circle for where the pitcher moves forward on the delivery. The rain has picked back up quite a bit. Uh, something to monitor now. Rain really responsible for the first laps as we saw out of Alex Dorocco last game, responsible for the home run and the hit by pitch, you could argue. And here we go. First up for Northwestern is going to be Hannah Cady. We saw Cady at the end of last game. Had a really nice hit to right field, a hard hit line drive.
She will be pinch hitting for Williams. And there is a called strike. Katie got that pinch hit single off of Storacco. One of only three hits that Northwestern got in that game. 0-1 poked over to second. Jimenez got to make a quick sidearm flip, and she does for the first out. Michigan infield, the middle especially, has looked very good so far today. Only a few errors, some of which could be chalked up to the wet conditions. So after that ground out, it is back to the top of the order. Skyler Schellmeyer due up, grounded out her first time up, had a single in the third, and eventually scored on it. First pitch, and that one is lined into right field, a base hit. Haley Hogenrod almost took a tumble there in right field. Looked like her feet slid out from underneath her. Still was able to make the play. And so right now, Schellmeyer and Rudd account for four of the five hits Northwestern has in this game. And she's aboard with one out in the inning. Always a threat to run. You know, you get Lewis and then Rudd in the hole. This is... A very critical situation for Bobia needs to keep runs off the board if she wants to give her hitters a chance to rally against Williams. First pitch, high, 1-0. Lewis reached on an error from Natalia Rodriguez in the first inning, eventually scored, struck out in the third. Looking for her first hit of game number two. 1-0. That one high. Schellmeyer, as we mentioned before, on first base. An efficient base stealer, six for seven on the year, second highest on the team, trails only to Rachel Lewis, who's 19 for 20. This is where these are hitters you don't want to fall behind, and that's exactly what she's done at 2-0. That changeup flutters in high, now 3-0. and oh. This is a dangerous situation for Michigan. Should Rachel Lewis end up on base, that's two base runners on with the stud Jordan Rudd up next, who's already 2-for-2 two two in this game with three RBIs. The wind-up and the 3-0 oh, called strike. Great job by Bobian. Not being phased by that 3-0 count there. Just going right at Rachel Lewis and keeping herself alive in this one. It is a 3-1 hitter's count for Lewis due up, though. Three one on the way. That's a called strike. Really good pitch. And the count runs full. Lewis struck out swinging her last time up. Megan would like to make her a victim again. Potential to be a huge play either way here with the full count. Three two fouled back. As always, Lewis is a big strikeout target. Now 19 on the year. It's third on Northwestern's team. Lewis, every swing is. High risk, high reward, a 344 hitter with five home runs and 19 RBIs. But again, as you said, 19 strikeouts. Three and two the count. Gobian ball in the glove, the wind up, the pitch, swing and a miss. A late and half-hearted swing there from Lewis. Now two outs in the inning, but she's got to sit down on the kryptonite. Jordan Rudd, four for six off of Gobian this weekend with five RBIs and three extra base hits including two already in this game. Jordan Rudd just in her third at bat, only a single and a triple away from the cycle. Fresh count on the way from Bobian. First pitch, a little outside. Definitely don't want to put anything over the heart of the plate, that's for sure. Wouldn't be... Too big of an issue to honestly just walk Jordan Rudd here. Morgan Newport up second is 0 for 2 on the day. 1-0, got her swinging and missing and out in front of the changeup. You definitely want to nibble at the edges 
Just nothing over the plate. If you have to concede a walk, you do, but you can't give up another extra base hit here. Yeah, that's the name of the game right now. Do not give Jordan Rudd anything she can drive. If you're going to give her anything over the plate, keep it low and tucked inside or out. 1-1. One, one. Froze her with the changeup, but I guess it was a little high. And the Michigan faithful aggravated about that. Definitely looked to be at the letters or a little below it, but 2-1 now the count. And Rudd with her two hits today, average up to 375 on the season. Doesn't take a ton of walks, so the on-base not much higher. 3-1 strike on the outside edge. Paints the corner there, 2-2. Two two. Perfect pitch. Yeah, don't get much better than that. You watch that one go by and you commend it, but also that pitch was perfect for Jordan Rudd to tee up if she wanted to. Two and two the count. Just off the plate outside, another perfect delivery, exactly where you wanted it. Carson held that one for a minute. Hoping to maybe get a call. So it's going to be full count, two outs, and one runner on. Megan Bobian against the highlight of this Northwestern lineup. 3-2. Change up is low, and that's ball four. Runner was going, but obviously a walk allows Rudd to get down there to first. I mean, again, I don't think that's the worst-case scenario at bat there against Rudd. You'd had some borderline pitches, thought you might get a strike three call, but it didn't in the end. It's a walk, and now if you can get this next out, you, you wiggle through it. But Newport, obviously, also a very good hitter. 0 for 2 today, but 323 on the season. The on-base close to 400 now. A lot of power, too. Yeah, but if you are Michigan and you have the choice, you'd much rather face Newport than Jordan Rudd, I mean... Northwestern currently holds this 3-1 lead pretty much solely due to Jordan Run, the RBI double and the two-run home run. This Northwestern has a quick little huddle right in front of their dugout, and now they break. So it's going to be Shellmeyer on second base, Rudd on first, and Morgan Newport stepping into this lefty batter's box, situated way near the back, just as we had mentioned before. Newport, seven doubles, two triples, and five home runs on the season. First pitch, ground ball to short. Rodriguez flips to second, and they get the force out. Bobian, one pitch to wiggle out of the jam. She strands two runners. That is a big inning for her. And Michigan still only two runs down. Three to one, headed to the bottom of the fifth, but going to have to hit a little bit better with runners in scoring position to claw back into this one. Not only does Megan Bobian leave two runners stranded, but she got through the scariest part of Northwestern's lineup, especially, namely, Jordan Rudd. But Michigan in search of two more to tie it and even more to take the lead. It's going to be 8-9 top. Haley Hoganrod, Sierra Kirsten, and Lexi Blair. The Wolverines do up in the bottom half of five. His all-star by Smash Mouth plays through the speakers. Trying to get the hitters fired up. The rain continues to fall here as I look over to my trusty puddle on the bleachers. Yeah, it's pretty solid at the moment. It's really the only spot where you can see the rainfall as we're looking through both glass and the net. It's kind of hard to see out on the field. Defensive lineup, the same for Northwestern. Schultz still behind the plate. Hoganrod 0 for 1 so far. It's only her second time up against Danielle Williams. And this one had a strikeout in her first time up swinging. Haley Hoganrod getting ready to check in. Hoganrod, Kirsten, and Blair. Haley's gone with I'm Still Standing by Elton John as her walk-up song. Not sure if that's a reference to her fifth year at Michigan, but great song. Ready to check in, and here we go. It's interesting, Williams, when she heads out to the circle, wears a mask, and then she takes it off when she gets ready to actually face hitters. 
but where's it during her warm-up pitches? Interesting. First on the way to Hoganrod, and I guess that was a little high. That top of the zone is starting to squeeze down a little bit. Saw that happen to Bobian in the top half of this frame. Hoganrod kind of pulled the hands in. That ball might have rode a little inside. 1-0 coming, called strike, 1-1. One and one. Supley back out in the bullpen for Northwestern, fully warming up now. Again, I don't know why you wouldn't keep riding Williams, but we'll see if Michigan can get some solid swings. They Every inning they have a couple batters that line it up decently well, and then they have a couple that struggle. There's a pitch high, 2-1. and one. In that last half inning you saw Bump with a nice at-bat, Carson hit a ball hard, and then you know, not, not as crisp from Espen and Jimenez. We're now getting to the fourth, fifth, sixth time that these Michigan hitters have seen Williams in the past two days. 2-1, two, that one bounces in 3-1. and one. one spotlight of hope for Michigan right now is Lexi Ware will appear in this inning no matter what. You'd like that to happen with a runner on. Hogan Rod's ahead 3-1 and one right now. Michigan down two, three to one. The pitch, ball four. And I'm not sure if that hit Haley. Looks looks like it looks like it might have caught. Yeah. The inside of her front left arm is signaled by the umpire, so that's going to bring up. If it did, it only grazed her jersey because it didn't you know it didn't change the trajectory of the ball at all. It didn't bounce off of her. And now we're going to have the same pinch hitter again, Lexi Voss will come in and pinch hit for Michigan, and then Lexi Blair on deck. Yeah, Lexi Voss, we saw her get two at-bats at the end of game one after coming in for Sierra Kirsten. Had two productive at-bats and, in fact, scored. A walk and a sacrifice bunt were her two plate appearances, and now she'll get ready to check in. Hogan Rod down there at first. Tying run back to the plate yet again. Foss was a pretty good power hitter at the high school level. I believe in the Chicago area, if my memory serves me correct. And now she'll check in. If nothing else, you want her to move the runner up and be a productive out. First pitch takes it a little high and tight. And now time is going to be called. Northwestern's going to have a meeting in the circle. Williams command. Starting to struggle a little bit here in the bottom of the fifth. She did throw quite a few pitches the other night, but she's had plenty of rests. But the thought of, you know, now multiple Northwestern pitchers having appeared in the bullpen has to kind of sit in the back of your mind as to whether or not she's been communicating some issues with her coaches or if it's strictly just in preparation should something go awry. And now the bench, or the dugout for Michigan, trying to get the Michigan parents and family in front of us to do the Go Blue chant. So as you mentioned, Lexi Blair most likely will come up to the plate with one runner at least on base. Unless there was a double play here. Yes. Runner on first, nobody out. Foss in the batter's box, ahead 1-0. Here's the pitch. She swings and lines it back to the screen. Big swing there from Lexi Voss. One one will be the count next time. Williams enters the circle. No outs. One runner on. Haley Hoganrod over on first base. The wind up in the pitch. Change up. Flutters low. It's a good take from Voss. The two Lexis up in a row here. And it'll be interesting to see after this at bat if they stick with Voss in the outfield as they did in the first game. 2 1 swings and she's just out in front of it. That ball hit really well down the third base line going off the top of the net in foul territory. The defensive rotation when Lexi Voss entered. She went to right field. Lexi Blair moved to left, and Haley Hoganrod moved to center. Uh, slid everybody over. over. Yep. Count now two and two. 
Williams is rubbing the ball against the left pant leg. The pitch, swing and a miss, powers it by Voss, who took a really healthy cut there. Now it'll be Blair to the plate. Lexi Blair, one for one so far in this one. Walked her first time up and then scored and had a single back in the third, was left stranded on second base. Make it nine strikeouts now for Danielle Williams. Williams just mowing through this Michigan lineup. Only three hits given up so far. First pitch to Blair is a called strike. Williams had six in the game yesterday, so she's up to her pace a decent bit. And the two strikeouts she's gotten of Jimenez is evidence of how deceptive her deliveries are in today's game. 0-1 on the way, that one high. The changeup has been such a useful weapon for both Danielle Williams and Megan Bobey and so far. Hitters just completely caught off guard, waving at him. Two very different styles of pitching than we saw in the game one matchup between Lauren Boyd and Alex Storacco. One and one the count. The wind up and the pitch. Blair takes that for a strike. That looked like a hittable pitch, but chose not to swing. Now she's behind one and two. You know, Lexi Blair is going to get after anything close here. Only four strikeouts on the season to go along with that 457 batting average. One, two coming. That one high. Hoganrod's going to run, and she's going to be safe. Great slide by Haley Hoganrod. The throw from Ashley Schultz was there, but Hoganrod slid outside the bag and reached back with that left hand to get around the tag from Rachel Lewis. Great base running there. Count is even at two apiece now. Lexi checks back in the batter's box. You like your odds here if you're Michigan. Lexi Blair hitting 531 with runners on base and with the speed of Hoganrod on second. 2-2 two, two, way high, 3-2. and two. Rodriguez on deck and Allen in the hole with one out in this inning. Tying run at the plate. So saying that number jumps up even higher with Hoganrod on second. Blair hitting 531 with runners on and hitting 609 with runners in scoring position. Three and two the count. The wind up, the pitch. Swing and a chop foul just slid it up in the air and then glances off the netting. Rode in on the hands and just kind of sliced it. Full count, one out. When Williams will step back in. Hogan out on second base. Natalia Rodriguez in the on-deck circle. Three and two the count. Williams steps back on the rubber. The wind up and the pitch. That one is rolled over to first and it's bobbled and not going to make a play. Lexi Blair beats it down the line. It was a ground ball right to the first baseman. Cochran was playing maybe two steps off the bag and couldn't secure it in the glove. And with Blair's speed down the line, she couldn't make that play. Lexi Blair just, again, showing off her speed and how effective it is and just putting pressure on the Northwestern defenders. I mean, anybody else, you fumble that ball at first base, you have time to recover, but Cochran fumbled it and then still had to dive towards first base in an attempt to get Lexi Blair and still was not in time. Runners on the corners, one out. Now you wonder, is a <laughs> squeeze in order with Rodriguez up? Northwestern is playing in against... The light hitting Rodriguez, first pitch coming, shows it and pulls it back and in, that allows Lexi Blair to scamper on down to second base. <laughs> and no throw came down and Blair almost thought she wasn't allowed to run or something. And she's standing down there at second looking confused. And yeah. I think the fielders are looking confused. They are completely napping there, playing in. No one was there to cover the bank. She's down there legally and now... Schultz will go out to have a conversation. Northwestern is going to bring all the players in, even including the outfielders, because they just look a little discombobulated right now. Yeah, they were so focused I mean, on Rodriguez and the chance of a bunt, they lost Blair behind the play, and now Michigan's got two in scoring position with only one out. Didn't even look like Lexi Blair got a good jump. She just took second base completely for free. I mean, 
The Tyra Rodriguez showed bunt and pulled back. It wasn't really a squeeze. It wasn't like she was just committing to it. It's kind of like when you see Albert Pujols or Miguel Cabrera steal a base where, you know, no one's even paying attention and they just <laughs> trot on down and there. Walk on down, exactly. Yeah. Except with the speed of Lexi Blair, it's always... Mm -hmm. Always has to be in the back of your mind. I mean, she's six for six on the year. Well, it's a correct decision not to throw down because you have the threat of the double steal with Hogan around at third. It just didn't seem like they were even considering it. 1-0, swing and a pop foul, and that will arc out of play and land in the seats. Count goes to 1-1. One and one. Now you got to think you kind of lean away from the squeeze here. I mean, with two runners in scoring position yeah. and... Lexi's speed on second base, a single to the outfield, has potential to score two. It's just a matter of if Natalia can get it through the infield. Fly ball to the outfield could get it home too. Probably be a liner. She doesn't hit a ton of arcing fly balls. 1-1, one, one, shows bunt, pulls it back. And now it's 2-1 as that pitch was outside and then got away from Schultz. And they actually appeal down now, and they say did not go. And she did kind of half stab at it, but... Pulled it back just enough. This is a big moment in the game now for Michigan. That ball almost got completely away from Schultz again. The question arises, why isn't Jordan Rudd back there? 2-1 strike on the outer edge. That's a phenomenal pitch from Williams. Not much Rodriguez can do if she was going to swing. She just has to look at it for a called strike two. And as a result, able to work back into the count is Danielle Williams. Two strike approach here, especially with runners in scoring position. Have to protect the plate and live to fight another day if you need to. 2-2, two, two, that one's high. Really good take from Rodriguez as it floated up. Started in the zone and then rose out of it. Now the count runs full. Lou is on deck. She's got Michigan's big hit of the day, which was a double. Back in the first to score a run. Runners on second and third, one out. Full count pitch, swing and a fly ball into center field. Shallow, but Hoganrod's going to tag. Throw coming home, and it is in time for the out. A great defensive play from Shellmeyer in center, and it ends Michigan's rally. Yeah, Northwestern storming the field, the team coming out of the dugout. It looked like a close play at home. Hoganrod tried to slide around her like she did on that time then that steal on second base and no honestly it kind of looked like she might have gotten around it but the tag must have hit yeah it the did. helmet the throw was definitely in time the the slide was tricky but I do think they got that tag in there you know it's a it's a difficult decision there if you're Michigan because on one hand you know your argument is if you don't send her you have two runners in scoring position for Lou Allen coming up. On the other hand, you're facing Daniel Williams. You're not going to get that many chances to score a run, and that's a 50-50 play. I think you have to take the chance. Yeah, absolutely, especially with a pitcher like Daniel Williams on the mound. She's been dominating this Michigan team. I mean, nine strikeouts so far on the day might even be more than that at this point. Ball's getting put in player rare, let alone with runners in scoring position. You know, and if I think... I think if that ball is hit more on a line, the run probably gets home. But it was a high-hanging fly ball. I think that allowed Shellmeyer to size it up really well and plant her feet, get all of her body motion into it, and make the throw that needed to be made. Yeah, even a little farther, that ball kind of stayed quite shallow. Shellmeyer caught it practically on the block M in center field. This has been a compelling game nonetheless. And they are going to keep Voss in the game in right. Same defensive rotation as last time. Hoganrod goes to center. Lexi Blair to left. Infield stays the same. And pitching does as well. Megan Bobian back out in the circle. It's 5 6 7. Zedak, Nelson, and Schultz are the three up due for the Wildcats. Our last time up, Angela Zedak got. Kind of embarrassed on three straight pitches. Bobian threw her three straight change-ups, and she was all on the front foot, way out, just kind of throwing her hands at it. First pitch coming is a called strike. Bobian elects not to go to the off speed there on pitch number one. 
Zedak, a 270 hitter on the season. 0 for 2 in this game. It was 0 for 3 last game. 0-1, a little outside. Hannah Carson sending some words of encouragement up there to Megan Bobie and saying, good pitch, I like that spot. That one barely missed, practically exact same pitch as the one that went first for a called strike. Again, more action in the Northwestern bullpen as Bobie and set to deliver the 1-1. Check swing, they're going to say it was a called strike either way, so the count goes 1-2. Zedak now in the hole. You would expect Bobie and to go back to that changeup here as Zedak has had absolutely no luck with it today. One and two the count. That pitch is high. Middle infield playing back at normal depth. Everyone playing pretty much straight up with no runners on. There's no reason to put a shift on, and especially against a hitter like Zedak, who isn't known to really bunt for hits. 2-2 from Bobian, inbound to Zedak. Quick calls time. Bobian was taking her time. Rain continues to fall here and increasingly hard at Alumni Field during game number two. And the top of the six, Northwestern still holds this 3-1 lead. The 2-2 from Bobian, change up outside corner just misses. <laughs> Wasn't clear to me if Zedak thought she had struck out. She kind of started trotting towards the dugout like she was going to sit down and then stopped. Yeah, that one real close. And like we said, Zedak hasn't had real good success with Megan Vobian's changeup so far. Three and two the count, the wind up, the pitch. Fly ball to right field, arcing towards the foul line and it will get out of play. Good charge into that one from Zedak. Lexi Ball has covered a lot of ground running towards the corner, but similar to the few Taylor Bump has hit down the left field line. That one just gets over the fence, but well foul. So we're going to do that 3-2 count again. Zedak quick drives off the bat. The infield looks... A little mucky, at least the inner infield does, behind the pitcher's mound. And something's going on down the left field line. Looks like something fell off the wall. <laughs> and into the field of play, the umpire went and got it. I didn't see what it was. Neither did I. Didn't look very big. Couldn't have been more than a, I mean, it looked like a, almost a coin size. Very small. Didn't look like a phone or something. 3-2 is the count again. Bobin checks the wristband. Now to the windup. 3-2. Swing and a pop-up in the field of play. Diving Lou Allen and just can't make the play. It just is on the other side of the foul line, so it's a foul ball. Trying to parrot the uh, you know emphatic play of Taylor Bump to end that first game. Lou Allen now just covered in dirt. With this rain, it's just... The clay is just sticky and sloppy, especially down the baselines where there's been a lot of foot traffic. Zedak again taking her time, wearing no batting gloves, quick drives off the hands. Three and two the count. It stays. Bobian checks the wristband yet again. Ball in the glove, the wind up in the pitch. Swing and a hard grounder. Nice backhand play. Jimenez made that one look easy. One out in the inning. Zedak finally gets a hold of the Bobian's changeup after looking at three and completely whiffing on her last at bat. She put a good charge into that one and right at Jimenez, and then she did the rest. Michigan, you know, the defense in the first inning failed them a little bit, but since then has been very sharp, was very sharp in the first game. A good all-around bounce-back day for the Wolverines. Won the first game, clawing to try to get this one, but they're trailing 3-1 to one in the top of the six as there's a called strike to Maeve Nelson. 
Nelson so far one for two in this one had a single back in the second inning was left stranded on second base grounded out to shortstop her last time up in the fourth this game was moving pretty quickly through the first three and has since slowed down to about normal pace oh one off speed I guess it's just outside one and one yeah, it's the fifth inning was a long inning, very stressful both ways. Michigan stranded a couple runners, and Northwestern stranded one technically, but threw out another one at home plate to end the frame. So, Ashley Schultz on deck, still looking for her first hit of the season. 1-1 one, one to Nelson. Strike at the top of the zone, 1-2. and two. And you just wonder about how different this game would feel if... if you know, Schellmeyer doesn't make that terrific play in the bottom half of the fifth. Would have been 3-2 to two with a runner on second or third. And Lou Allen at the plate, two outs, chance to tie it up. Instead, stays 3-1, to one, ends that inning. Just a massive, massive defensive play from Schellmeyer. 1-2, swing and a miss. Nelson chases it. That's now seven strikeouts for Bobian. And Great pitch right there from Megan Bobey and to go after a real strikeout hitter in Maeve, ne or in Maeve Nelson. She has now 29 on the season. Good hitter all the way around, but when she does get out, it's usually on the strikeout, struggles with that quite a bit. Yeah, definitely went after her, and now you got Ashley Schultz in the seven hole to the plate. There's a soft tapper to second. Going to have to be a quick underhand scoop. Jimenez makes it. Michigan gets through the top of the sixth really easily, but now they have six outs to try and get two runs across here in the sixth and the seventh. They've continued to threaten in the last few innings, putting together long at-bats, drawing walks, putting balls in play at some points, but just haven't found the riddle yet. Not enough balls being squared up, but they've got a couple hitters with the potential to do that to lead off this inning in Lou and Taylor Bump. As Haley Hogenrod has some words for her team in this huddle as ahead of the bottom of the six. Like you said, six outs to get two runs to tie, three to take the lead here. One good thing for Michigan and something that can they can kind of keep in mind is going back out on the defensive end. They have hitters eight then nine before the top of the order. Yeah. Nikki Cochran and Danielle Williams are combined 0 for 3 so far in this contest. And your three through eight hitters are all guaranteed to get at least one more plate appearance. So, you know, this is definitely a lot of chance to, to come back into this game. But, again, not going to be easy against Williams. And, you know, I think Michigan's made some solid adjustments in this game but are looking for that breakthrough inning. They've definitely looked a lot more locked in than they did yesterday, have a little bit more answers, but not quite the perfect riddle yet, only three hits. They have drawn two walks and gotten on via an error. I mean, credit where credit is due. Danielle Williams yeah. has been fantastic so far in this one. Nine strikeouts, and she's just been kind of mowing through these Michigan hitters in the past two days. Well, Williams is one of the Big Ten's premier hurlers. Big Ten freshman of the year a couple seasons ago, and has been extremely good this season, entering this inning a 1-3-7 ERA. Did what she needed to do to showcase herself as elite after getting through Minnesota's order a couple times in that series. Was the only Northwestern pitcher who had answers that weekend. Now Allen will get ready to check in. Rain continues to fall here at Alumni Field. Probably closest to its hardest point of the day. Yeah, it's coming down at a, a pretty steady clip right now as we enter bottom of six. Michigan still down two. Three to one is the score in favor of the Wildcats. Approaching the five o'clock hour here Eastern time in Ann Arbor. There's a first pitch high to Lou. Lou just moves that front left shoulder out of the way. Road inside a little bit. Taylor Bump in the on-deck circle. Lou with a double RBI back in the first inning. Looks at the off-speed for a strike. If you look at the big difference in this game, Bobian 70 strikes in 99 pitches. 
Williams, 54 strikes in 92 pitches, not nearly finding the zone as well as Megan, but in some cases, Megan found too much of the zone against Jordan Rudd. Now there's a called strike to Allen. Williams has done well to nibble around the edges against some of these Michigan hitters. I mean, Northwestern holds this lead, but besides those two big hits from Jordan Rudd, Bobian's been pretty, pretty elite so far in this contest. And there's a swing and a base hit into right field. A nice base knock from Lou. She beats it out to first as it was hit so hard there was actually a play at first base, but the right fielder coming up and throwing it in. That's Morgan Newport who tried to catch Allen napping. She's aboard now, and you know Lou has been the bright spot today. That one's got to be a little bittersweet if you're yeah. a Michigan fan <laughs> after the end of that last inning. Haley Hogenrod getting doubled up on a play where she tried to tag it home as we have a pinch runner come out. It's going to be Thais Gonzalez for Lou Allen. I, I still think it was the right idea to send her. I do as well. Taylor Bump now coming to the plate. Bit of a Monday morning quarterback situation there. Yeah. Bump, one for two so far in this one. Swinging strikeout in her first time up. Back in the fourth inning, had a single, was left stranded on first. No outs, one runner on, and a fresh count to the senior. Bump takes the first pitch high. Taylor barreled it up against Williams last night. Hit a home run. One right here would tie this game in one swing of the bat. Three to one Northwestern. The wind up in the 1-0. Change up Frozer, but I guess it was a little low or maybe outside. Tough to tell from our vantage point, but now she's ahead 2-0. And, and again, Williams has struggled to throw strikes at certain points in this game. Issuing a couple walks has fallen behind a lot of hitters today. Has done enough to work back. 2-0 coming, bump is out in front. Yeah, she was ready for that. One thing Taylor Bump has done really well so far this season is being the one to kind of break things open when Michigan's struggling to get hits down. I mean, we saw it in that game last night against Danielle Williams where she hit that solo home run for the first hit of the game and Michigan's lone run. She's done it a few times this year, producing at a pretty steady rate. 2-1 the count. Looks at that off the edge, now three and one. Hannah Carson on deck. Lauren Essman and then Jimenez, three pretty good hitters, If even though they haven't had a lot of success today. It's been the top of the order that's done all the damage for Michigan. Good spot to be in for the Wolverines, three one count. Here it is. <laughs> Taylor was looking for the fastball there and got the change up and swung right over it. Bump on the 3-1 hitter's count was looking for something to drive with the opportunity of possibly an RBI with some speed on first and Thais Gonzalez. The 3-2 swing and a fly ball to left center field. This one well hit. Moving over is Schellmeyer and she'll make the play. Into the gap. That one just hung up a little too much. She drives it a little harder. Might have gotten down, but just got under it. And that'll bring up Hannah Carson. Thais still over there at first. Yeah, that ball kind of on the outer half of the plate. Bump tried to pull it, and, you know, she had some good power behind it, but ball just kept up in the air and gave Sh Skyler Schellmeyer time to get into that right or left center gap and catch that one on the run. So Hannah Carson now up with one runner on and one out. Williams waiting for the signs and took way too long there. Hannah calls for time. Now she'll get ready to step back in. Lauren Essman on deck. First pitch, Carson out in front, and it was well in the dirt, too. Again, you know, you look at Carson on the season. She's got two homers. Essman, we know, has a lot of power. Jimenez has got two homers. I mean, these are three hitters here coming up who do have the ability to leave the yard. 0-1 outside, 1-1. One one. The issue is we have not seen any of those three really show that 
they are locked in against Williams. All 3-0 for 6 in this game combined, and none of them have been really good-looking swings. Carson's got a strikeout. Jimenez has struck out twice. Esmond, I know, has struck out at least once. 1-1, one, one, and again, right there, a swing and a miss, not even close. Yeah, Daniel Williams has done a really nice job of not giving these Michigan hitters anything they can drive. You know, she's kind of living low in the zone with a lot of off-speed, a lot of change-ups diving off the table, and when she does ramp up the velocity, just trying to paint the edges and not leave anything over the plate. Taylor Bump's home run last night, she, you know, just kind of left a fastball right over the plate, and Bump punished her for it as Carson falls off the 1-2. Yeah, again, just fighting to stay alive there. I mean, I'd keep going off-speed and low to Carson. Carson, again, struggling with the off-speed. We've, we've seen her wave at two. The one-two on the way. Now they went to the fastball there. And got a piece, did Carson. Just looped it off the screen. Now starting to put together a good at-bat, but again, you just get the sense she's, she's just fighting, like a fish out of water, flopping around, trying to just make contact. The Carson. top of the order has, has been able to, to put some good swings on the ball. This middle half needs to pick it up. Looking for her first hit of game number two. There's Follows another one. one off. Yeah, just a check swing. Taps it back. She's going to try and just stay alive as long as she can until perhaps Williams gets her, gives her something that she likes. I've mentioned it a few times with pitchers, but Hannah Carson as well kind of knows where this strike zone is, knows what she can get after. I mean, she's caught the past two games. Strike zone's been pretty consistent between the two of them. A pitch high, two and two. This is now a long at bat. Williams well over 100 pitches to the game. Michigan has made her work in these middle innings. The wind up and the 2-2. Two -two. She swings and pops this one up in the infield. Again, another off-balance swing on a pitch low. And just kind of slices it up in the air harmlessly into the glove of Lewis. And now two outs just like that. Lauren Essman will come up and take her shot now with Tyus Gonzalez still over there on first base, the pinch runner. That was an eight pitch at bat. Tyus Gonzalez hasn't really had to move off first base since coming into pinch run for Taylor Bump. Rubbing the ball on the left pant leg is Williams. Now to the windup. First pitch high. Check swing from Messman there. His coach Hutchins calls timeout. She wants to talk to Lexi, or sorry, to Lauren Essman. Again, Essman's got that power. Hit a monstrous home run against Maryland last week. Was a, a big power hitter in the Kalamazoo High School softball circuit. Julia Jimenez on deck. Michigan kind of getting to the end of their rope here. Only four outs left should they need it. Well, one storyline is that when you do get hits off of Williams, it tends to be hard contact. She's given up. 62 hits on the year, but of those, 24 of them have been extra base hits, meaning about 38% of the hits she's given up have been extra basers. You compare that to Storocco this year, who's mostly all been giving up singles. 1-0 is high. Well, and Esmond in a good spot here coming into pitch number three. 2-0 -oh hitters count. You know she's got power. She has... Only one home run on the season, but that one that she hit was absolutely launched. 2-0 count. She takes that one high, 3-0. and Jimenez on deck. Mac Dunlop comes over, gives her a quick high five, and now heads back to third base. Just a quick word of encouragement, trying to keep her teammate locked in here in the bottom of six.
The 3-0. Essman taking all the way and she takes ball four. Third walk issued today by Williams. Now two aboard. And Jimenez comes to the plate. And I think we're gonna have a conversation here. Northwestern's gonna try and slow this down. Game is now across the two hour mark. Uh, starting to verge into longer territory. And Hutch He's talking with the home plate umpire, Tyler Barfus, about something. Could potentially have a substitution of some kind. I think they might see what's going on. Jimenez is walking over, and I think we're going to have a pinch hitter. Looks like it's going to be Chandler Dennis. Well, that's interesting. Has she gotten a plate appearance this year? Uh, she has three at-bats. She's 0 for 3 on three at-bats, but, you know, Jimenez has kind of looked lost up there against Danielle Williams. Yeah, I don't necessarily disagree with a pinch hitting decision. This particular pinch hitter is a very fascinating decision. You wonder, you know, Kiki Thole perhaps is sort of more of a known quantity as a pitcher, and... I'm sorry, as a hitter, rather, as opposed to the pitcher, Dennis. I mean, that's been her focal point. She is marketed as a two-way player, but not a ton of at-bats. I guess if nothing's working, you try to shake it up. Throw a bit of a wild card in the mix. Two on and two outs. Michigan trails by two. We really have no frame of reference to know much about Dennis as a hitter. Three plate appearances this season, and none to my memory from last year. I don't remember Chandler Dennis getting an at bat last year either, but we will see. So Tyus Gonzalez on second base, Lauren Esman on first is. That was a long meeting the in the circle. Yeah, it was. Now they finally are breaking. It looked like they were trying to dig some mud out of someone's cleats in there. I think it was Danielle Williams. She'll, I mean, the the uh, rubber is almost completely hidden. Very dirty right now. The mud is starting to become an issue. It continues to rain. First pitch to Dennis. She swings, hits this one into right field. It's going to be down and go to the corner. One run scores. It's bouncing around. Two runs will score. Dennis stops at second. And Michigan has tied the game. Throw the wild card in the mix. Let her go to work. Chandler Dennis swings at the first pitch and drives it down the right field line. Remind us never again to doubt Hutch. Chandler Dennis down there at second and now a tie 3-3 game. And here comes the pinch runner Kaylee Rodriguez as Haley Hoganrod ready to step up. The Michigan faithful is jumping up and... Really vocal as the game has now been tied at three. Michigan needed that big two-out knock with runners in, on base. And it did look like there's no error going to be given, but there was a misplay in the corner there by Morgan Newport. Had trouble with it as it kind of bounced around like a pinball in that right field corner. And Dennis on the first pitch just pumps it down the right field line. Well, off the bat, I wasn't sure if that ball would even... Get down in fair territory. Yeah, that was going to be the question. Six inches away from the line, and it kind of rolled awkwardly into the corner, hit the sidewall first before that back wall in the corner. So a tough play for Newport, but fortunate for the Wolverines. Change up there is a ball a little low to Haley Hoganrod. This game has really lived up to the billing. This has been a just incredible two games here today. Michigan and Northwestern battling very much looking like two of the best teams in the conference. 1-0 on Hoganrod, runner on second. Hoganrod swings and loops this one into the glove of the second baseman, Lewis, tracking backwards. Had to be careful there as she went onto the grass. But that'll do it, and now we head to the top of the seventh. Game tied at three. And Bobian will go right back out there. She's definitely pitched better these last three innings. And they... We'll have eight, nine, and one up, will the Wildcats. And this is where, you know, opportunity for Megan to get another quick inning 
Send your hitters right back up there with a chance to win the game. Yeah, if you're Megan Bobine, you can't afford to mess around with Nikki Cochran and Danielle Williams. Have to go right at them and just take full advantage of the weak spot in this Northwestern lineup before getting back to the top. I mean, Skylar Schellmeyer is scary right now. Two for three on the day. But Michigan just three outs away from getting back in on the bottom half of seven. I mean, you look at since that two-run homer in the third, Bobian got the last two outs in that inning. One, two, three innings in the fourth and the sixth. In the fifth, she faced the top, gave up a single and a walk, but pitched around it. I mean, overall, very good response. Just two base runners allowed in the last you know, almost three and a half innings of work for Bobian. And she's made quick work of the bottom half in that time, starting to settle in a little bit. And Michigan's been playing good defense the last five innings. Again, as we said in that, First game when Lexi Blair hit that grand slam with two outs, you can never count the Wolverines out. They're going to fight down to the very last minute. Showing a lot of metal in this game in what has been a terrific pitching matchup. Michigan looking to take both of these games in today's doubleheader. We weren't even expecting to get both games in. There's definitely been an odd one of these two games. I mean, you have for Michigan, their big hits of the day, a <laughs> ground ball inside the park home run in the first game to Lexi Blair as the first pitch to Cochran is just off the plate. And then a, you know, two RBI double in this one from a hitter with three career plate appearances in a pinch hit situation on the first pitch. So unlikely stories here in the game today. 1-0 the count on Cochran, who is 0-2 today. 1-0 there, bounces in. You wonder again about the gripping both of the ball and of the cleats as yeah. the rain has definitely picked up in the last couple innings. That front half of the pitcher circle just looking torn up as ever. Might have to send the grounds crew back out before we go to the bottom half of the inning. 2-0 on the way. Cochran pops it up, but it will arc foul and get out of play. One thing that should be mentioned about that Chandler Dennis at bat is Hutch was waving her to third as she was rounding second and kind of stumbled a little bit on the base, the base a little bit wet, so she held up, but had potential to be a bases clearing triple. Two and one the count. That one is high, three and one. Bobian's got to be careful now against a hitter like Cochran. You do not want to put her on base. I mean, Northwestern would almost certainly go to a pinch runner, and then you're you know, starting to flip back to the top with nobody out. Interested to see what Bobian goes to here on the 3-1. Called strike, and <laughs> Cochran thought it w was ball four. I wasn't so sure. I thought that was a pretty clear strike, but trying to sell it perhaps. Now the count runs full. She did strike out looking back in the second. 14 strikeouts on the season so far. Three and two the count. Ball in the glove, the wind up in the pitch. Swing and a pop foul off the screen. Takes a big carom into the glove of Taylor Bump. She gives it right back to Bobian and we'll do the full count again. This is a really nice battle here. Cochran kind of bailed Bobian out there. That one looked like it was a little high in the zone. Might have chased it a little bit. Well, the rise ball did its job and she just Followed it upstairs. Count is still full. The pitch and a very similar play again where just getting a piece, that one looked like it rode in on the hands and slices it foul. Looping over all of the seating on the third base side. Bobian's going to get a dry ball. As, as you said, that one bounces out. So full count again. Nobody on and Nobody out here in top seven. The 3-2 again. Swing and a grounder over to third. Bump misplays it. Throw across in time. Cochran's lack of speed there bails Michigan out. Tough hop in the muddy dirt on Taylor Bump, but she makes the play. Pretty much any other hitter in Northwestern's order. That probably is an infield hitter in E5, depending on how it's marked, but a little bit of a gift, and Bump takes care of it. Yeah, you never know how the ball is going to react on 
this wet ground, whether it's going to stick or take an awkward hop, but Taylor Bump doing a nice job. I mean, she took that one off the bottom lip. You can see her yeah. kind of messing around with it a little bit there, but how about the arm? Yeah. Just, that was an absolutely rifle. She was someone who played a lot of first early in her career. A lot of questions about could she hang at third. Passed the eye test for me the last few games. First pitch to Williams. That one dives down and in towards the shoe tops. And now Bobian, I think, is having some trouble with her grip. She kicked her heel up. See if they want to get that little tool to scrape the dirt out at some point. Williams 0 for 1 so far in this one. She was pinch hit for in her last time up. It was Katie who came in. 1 and 0 the count. <laughs> Change up there from Bobian, and Williams is way off balance. Taste of her own medicine, you could say. Williams has made a lot of Michigan hitters look like that when she's been in the circle, but yeah. this time she's the fool. Williams completely guessing at that one. I mean, she was finished with her swing by the time that ball hit Hannah Carson's glove. One and one the count. Strike at the knees, one and two. The Michigan fan yells change up, and Megan Bobian blows it by Danielle Williams. She's in a good spot now. One, two is the count. One out, nobody on. Bobian in the driver's seat. Puts the ball in the glove, the wind-up, the one-two, swing and a miss. It gets away. Carson makes an accurate throw down to complete the strikeout. Two outs in the inning, and this is exactly what you wanted, which is two outs and nobody on to face Skyler Schellmeyer. Schellmeyer having a decent day at the plate overall. Went 0 for 3 in game number one, but has bounced back and since hit two for her last three. Two back-to-back -back singles and the third and the fifth scored on that one in the third. Always a threat to put the bunt down and beat it out. The slap hitter takes a ball low. I don't remember her first hit in the third particularly well, but her last one, she just fit it through the hole in the infield with the infield playing in. Schumacher's. Two hits have come on that ground ball, as you said, that hole right in the infield and soft liner to right field. 1-0 liner into the left field. Goes the opposite way, and she's three for four today. And here we go, Rachel Lewis to the plate. This is where the situation <laughs> becomes a bit hairy. If you're a Michigan fan, Rachel Lewis stepping to the plate. An absolute menace up there, a 341 hitter. 19 RBIs on the season, has scored 28 times. On base just shy of an even 500, hitting 423 with two outs. If there's one solace here is that Michigan has actually played her very well today. She struck out swinging twice, and she's out in front of that one, and I think she got a piece, 0-1. Her other at-bat was a ground ball to short that should have been made. It was an error, so she's 0-3 for 3 on the day. But obviously, again, likes Shellmeyer. Any ball in the infield has got to be a bang-bang play with Lewis's speed. 20 steals on the season. 0-1. Strike on the outside edge, 0-2. Beautiful pitch from Megan. Great frame by Hannah Carson, too. Bobby and pointed right at her and basically said thanks for that one. Good situation to be in now. 0-2 count, two outs, and... A chance to leave a runner stranded. Checks the wristband. The wind up. The 0-2 just dives off the plate outside. You know, Lewis is a hitter who gets herself in a lot of long at-bats. She strikes out a lot, but she also draws a ton of walks. 20 walks to 20 strikeouts on the season. Leads the team in both categories. Loves to get in those long battles. Sometimes she wins them, sometimes she doesn't, but she makes the pitcher work. One, two. <laughs> Fooled her again with the changeup, but she just got a piece. I mean, a half swing, and she had to hold her swing about halfway through and just keep it there for the ball to glance off of it. 
she had finished the swing, it would have been strike three. Great wrist strength by Rachel <laughs> yeah. Lewis to hold the bat there. It's like a check swing, and then she just held it and threw her hands out at the last second to touch that changeup. Obian had her completely fooled. One, two count. That one a little high and outside. Two and two. He's trying to get her to chase outside right now. You know, Rachel Lewis, you know she has power. Five home runs, 19 RBIs, as we said. You don't want to give her something in her wheelhouse. Anything that she can drive, you want to stay away from. Here. Runner on first, 2-2 two -two count, two outs in the inning, tie game, top of the seventh. The windup, the pitch, check swing, and did not go. I guess it was a little higher, maybe outside. Count runs full, and you do not want to put a runner in scoring position with Rudd on deck. Yeah, the stakes get higher here. Full count, two outs. Lewis battles all the way back from 0-2 down. Full count. Runner on first. Will be going. 3-2 swing, and she's out in front of it and puts a big charge, but it goes well foul, lands on top of the batting cage. This, the last at bat that she was up, she struck out swinging, but I remember that was a full count one that went a long ways too. I mean, really dramatic at bats here. Or Rachel Lewis against Megan Bobian. Yeah, something that Rachel Lewis does really well is extends at bats. Three and two the count. The wind up, the pitch, another foul back to the screen. Lewis Heck of a battle here. Yeah, really protective hitter right now, way up on the plate, falling off anything she doesn't like. Bobian's pitch count well over 100 at this point in top of the seventh. Three and two the count. Bobian checks the wristband now to the windup. The three two. Swing and a miss. Check swing and she went around. Bobian gets the strikeout and the hitters will go to the plate with a chance to win it. 3-3 game headed to the bottom of the 7th, Michigan and Northwestern. This was a classic, folks. And you're listening to Michigan Softball on WCBN Sports. Going into the bottom of the 7th, this one tied up. And for Michigan, who else do you want do up than the top of the order? It's going to be Lexi Voss in the 9-hole, followed by Lexi Blair batting leadoff, and then Natalia Rodriguez. Those are the three that are confirmed to be up. Michigan... Only needs one to win it here at Alumni Field and take both games of today's doubleheader. It's been an interesting one and will be an exciting ending no matter what. Lexi Voss struck out her last time up, but had a good quality at bat, some quality swings, and Lexi Blair do up first. I mean, what isn't there to say about her? I mean, if you're Lexi Voss here, you just need to get on base. Put yourself on and then let the top of the order go to work. Those one, two, three, four have been the best swings of the day. Chandler Dennis notwithstanding against Danielle Williams. There is no uh, special extra inning tiebreaker rule in effect. So if it does go to the eighth, there's no runner on second, as is the case sometimes in non-conference tournaments. That's just something to keep in mind. 3-3 three, three game, Northwestern. Three runs on six hits, one error committed. Michigan, three runs on five hits, two errors committed. Both teams have left five runners on. This has been a just an incredible game. And Michigan hopes that it is a memorable finish to try and sweep the Saturday doubleheader. And kudos to both Megan Bobie and, and Rachel Lewis in that last at-bat. That last at-bat went nine pitches before Bobby and eventually struck her out. Lexi Voss gets ready to check in. As you said, if you're Lexi Voss here, you don't want to try and do too much. Just get on base and let your teammates back you up here. Danielle Williams back out in the circle for her seventh inning of work. First pitch called strike on the outer edge. We have some people in the live chat, one person says, really impressed with Taylor Bump's career arc. She is proof that hard work and patience leads to success. I think you could say that. Yeah, Taylor Bump's production this year has been fantastic. 
0-1, Voss swings and drives this one to left field. Back over the head of the left fielder. She's going to take a wide turn and go back to first with a really hard hit single over Zedak's head. Nice play by Zedak off the wall to keep the runner at first and deny extra bases to Lexi Voss, but that's exactly what we said she needed to do, get on base. Great hit there by Lexi Voss. Again, just not trying to do too much and letting Danielle Williams do the work for her. Coming in with some high velocity right there, and like I said, Voss just puts the bat on the ball and lets physics do its work. That's going to bring up Lexi Blair. 20 RBIs on the season, a 452 batting average, and She's one for two Grim today Reaper. with a walk. The corners are playing in. First pitch is taken outside, I guess, 1-0. You know, they're playing in, but I would not bunt Lexi in a million years in this situation. We know that Hutch loves to bunt probably more than I'm comfortable with, but you can't, I mean, I guess you could, but you have Natalia on deck. She's not, you know, a run, an RBI producer, and Lexi's your best hitter. She swings and loops this one down the line. It's going to drop in fair territory. Voss headed down to second, and she had to stay at first to see if it was going to be caught. And now you have Natalia Rodriguez at the plate, and this is a textbook bunt situation. Yeah, absolutely. You know Northwestern's going to be playing for the bunt here, but I love the call not bunting there. There's no way you take the bat out of the hands of your best hitter in a situation like this. So now you have two on. If you can get Rodriguez to lay it down, then you move the runners up, and then you're talking about, you know, can Lou Allen put a fly ball into the outfield? I think you would like your chances of that. Yeah, really just put one in play. I mean, everybody who comes up before Lou Allen is going to have great speed, especially Lexi Blair and Natalia Rodriguez. Rodriguez at the plate. Corners are going to be drawn in as well. The shortstop... Maeve Nelson has to play closer to third. And Lewis at second deep in the hole. Rodriguez shows bunt, lays it down, perfectly executed. Quick throw over, and it's going to be in time. Nat Rod does her job. Runners move up. Here we go. Lou Allen to the plate. Winning run 60 feet away. And Lewis had a terrific day at the plate. Two for three. And she has seen Daniel Williams by far the best of any Michigan hitter. Selfless play there by Natalia Rodriguez just doing her job. That bunt is as big a play as any in a situation like this. Puts two runners in scoring position. All Lou Allen needs to do is pretty much get it out of the infield. and This could be game. That's some let's go blue chance. Feel the stadium as sounds of the band are pumped through the loudspeakers. Alumni Field, in its limited capacity, is rocking right now, given Michigan, the less than ideal weather conditions. Michigan has worn down Danielle Williams in this game. And she is just trying to escape this inning. Got Allen at the plate, and if you can get through Allen, you still got to get through Taylor Bump. And uh, we're going to have a pinch runner. They're going to take Lexi Voss off the base paths, it looks like. And that's number 17. That's going to be Kirsten. They're putting her right back in the game at third. Kirsten very speedy. Yeah, in a situation like this, base running expertise and just honestly flat out speed is what you need on third base right now. So we saw a nail at the plate earlier. That was from Shellmeyer. We know she's got a good arm, but it was should be noted that wasn't a very deep fly ball, and it also was not as fast of a runner. Hoganrod can run, but I think Kirsten is a little bit quicker. And the infield's drawn in and run prevention mode. Here we go. Runners on second and third, one out in the inning. First pitch to Lou is taken outside. The senior from Hesperia, California, stands in the batter's box. Now checks out. We'll get right back in. Taps the plate twice. 1-0 the count. 1-0 on the way. She swings and drives it to left. You can forget about it. Three. Run. Walk off. Home. Run. Lou Allen sends the fans home happy. Michigan sweeps the doubleheader with a 6-3 win. 
Lou pumps her seventh of the year out past left field, and Michigan downs the Cats. And she is being mobbed right there. Just Danielle past home Williams plate. Left that ball over the middle of the plate. And Lou Allen said, see you later. That ball absolutely launched off the scoreboard in left field. And what a way to close out the day. Michigan takes game number two, six to three. After two big innings back-to-back, -back, scoring two in the bottom of the six to tie it. And then a three-run walk-off home run from Lou Allen. And that is a heck of a battle there for Michigan. I mean, you look at this day, how well uh, they played in this both games today. I mean, yesterday, of course, you know, you, you look at, at Michigan and not a lot went right. Pitching wasn't as sharp. Hitting couldn't really do anything. Defense left a lot to be desired today. Outside of one inning, defense was phenomenal. Hitting, very strong. I mean, you put up 13 runs. And the pitching, very good, only allowing five runs in the two combined games. And, you know, you, you win the first game where you felt you had a big edge in the pitching matchup. This is one where, at best, you're at a push in the pitching matchup. And you managed to grind it out, battling, coming from behind, scoring two in the sixth and the walk-off three-run blast in the seventh. We'll see how Northwestern responds to getting a couple punches to the face yeah. tomorrow. There was no doubt about that last one. I mean, <laughs> as soon as the ball left Lou's bat, everyone in the stadium knew it. Danielle Williams just kind of put her head down. But what an outing from the Michigan hitters in the later innings. Never gave up. Like we said in that first game where Lexi Blair hit that grand slam with two outs and they loaded the bases with two outs. Michigan's never out of the fight. This team has a lot of heart, and they love to play the game, love to win. Michigan now moves to 23 and 5 on the season. Northwestern drops to 22 and 9. Wolverines can try to get 3 out of 4 tomorrow. I have to imagine Starocco will be back in the circle for the Wolverines. We'll see who Northwestern goes to for them to try and salvage game number 4 of this weekend set, but a really just terrific couple of games. Want to thank all of you for listening to both these games here on YouTube as well as our audio on BTN Plus it was a lot of fun. I'll be back here tomorrow, and you'll be over in baseball, so those two will be right here on our YouTube channel if you want to take a listen. But for that, final score of game number two, Michigan 6, Northwestern 3 from Alumni Field. Charlie Brigham, Alex Strain saying good night and go blue.